All right, welcome everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Senator, nice to see you. Um, in accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So for my, for my fellow board members, we're going to jump a little bit around on the schedule because we have uh, distinguished guests here this evening. And I'd like to go right to the recognition, the Youth Services Committee members, Kathy Dardino and Judy Hall, who are here, and there's members of the committee behind them. So would you mind stepping forward, stepping up, coming forward? These two women love the limelight, <laughs> as you can tell. All of us? <laughs> Just the two of you, yes, please. <laughs> Why don't you have a seat? Because we're going to do a couple of presentations for you, and we'd, we would love it if we, we could have Senator Tarr come and speak first. Um, most of you know, and we have the, our TA is going to do a little background, but most of the members of the community realize that these two ladies were instrumental in beginning what we now have as the Youth Services Committee. They're very dedicated to our youth population in the town. And what ended up happening with their years and years of dedication and fundraising efforts and focusing in on youth is this resulted in a, in a very active Youth Services Committee upon which they served for many, many years. It also ended up resulting in our youth uh, services department and we have wonderful youth services coordinator and a wonderful youth services director and so we've seen uh, a, a lot of change a positive change and a positive investment in, in our youth in this town because as a direct result of what the two of you have have done and so we wanted to honor you and commend you and acknowledge you because they resigned from the committee, <laughs> so it's as, as much of a loss as it is for us. They are uh, moving on to other endeavors, but we'll still be, we'll still see them and they'll still most likely be involved because it's in their blood, but we just wanted to acknowledge you and honor you. And Senator Tarr is here to do a presentation as well, so please, Senator. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and, and through you to the members of the board and to the audience, I'm honored to be here with all of you tonight, and I want to congratulate the board and the town administrator for uh, performing this act of recognition tonight because these two ladies so well deserve it, and I think it's very appropriate to have this joint expression of congratulations and appreciation to Kathy and to Judy. And I was very intrigued by a comment uh, that I'm apparently uh, moving the, around the agenda because of my limited <laughs> schedule, so I appreciate the opportunity to do that. Uh, but I, I'll be brief, but I, I really uh, wanted to, uh, on behalf of the legislative delegation, myself and uh, Representative Jones, express our deep appreciation to both of you. Uh, you have been there from the very start of a movement that has been extremely productive on behalf of youth in North Reading. And in fact, one of the hallmarks of this community is how it cares for its citizens of all ages. But with regard to the modern effort to help uh, young people in the community, uh, Kathy and Judy, you too have been the moving forces behind that. Uh, first creating a nonprofit and then having that nonprofit actually morph into a, a town agency and that alone is something that is remarkable rather than having it go the other way and so <laughs> well well you know in in many cases like with many things we're not sure exactly how but we do know if the right people with the right idea and the right commitment get behind something it happens and it's happened in North Reading because of the two of you. And uh, for so many years doing the things that are sometimes not glamorous, understanding the, the mechanics of what needs to happen and spending a lot of times that aren't in the public limelight, getting the details organized and getting the details right. And all of us have been here to watch that and admire it. Uh, but I don't know that we can fully appreciate everything that you've done behind the scenes to create this wonderful effort that still is producing benefits in the town and will for the foreseeable future. You know, because one of the things that I know we all worry about 
in, um, in this era are the things that compete for our young people's attention. And there are a lot of threats out there um, to them having productive lives. And the most recent one I think we all focus on is the situation of opiate addiction. And we all think about the fact that we need to give our kids good choices so that they won't make the choices that can be harmful to them in their lives. And throughout the years, throughout the many years, the two of you have presented those good choices and helped us all understand how we could work with you so that they could have those good choices. And you certainly have led the effort in the community. So I do have uh, some citations, uh, both from the House and the Senate. Um, oftentimes, or, or sometimes, the House and the Senate don't agree. But with the two of you, it was absolutely unanimous. So I, I do have um, I, uh, some citations that I'll, uh, I'll read. Um, and I'll try to do this as briefly as I can so that it isn't redundant. You'll notice, by the way, uh, that the Senate, the, the House has a very colorful cover on its citations. And for years, the Senate had just a plain blue cover. But we weren't going to let that go on forever. And so we now have added the gold citation cover. And don't worry, it was done to the low bidder, so there wasn't a lot of government expense. <laughs> but, uh, but let me read the uh, Senate citations and the, and the House citations after that. So uh, from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the State Senate, uh, these are official citations which read, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to uh, Judy Hall and Kathy Dardino of the Youth Services Committee in recognition of 13 years of demonstrated service and commitment to youth services in the town of North Reading, uh, to both of you. And these are signed by our Senate President, Karen Spilka. Uh, they are attested to by our clerk, Michael Hurley. And I am so proud to offer them on June 17th of 2019. And uh, from our colleagues in the House, uh, you'll notice the verbiage is similar because we are not as inefficient as some might say. So uh, these read, be it hereby known to all, that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Judy Hall and Kathy Dardino in recognition of your dedicated service on the North Reading Youth Services Committee. Now interestingly enough, both of these say the entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all future endeavors, <laughs> and we all have a great amount of anticipation about that. And uh, these two were given on the 17th day of June 2019 at the State House, Boston, Massachusetts, and they are signed by the Speaker of the House, Robert A. DeLeo, and offered by our very own House Minority Leader, State Representative Brad Jones. And so uh, I am honored to be able to present these to both of you as shining examples of citizen engagement and seeing a challenge that needs to be addressed and on behalf of a community stepping up to the plate and not only addressing it, but doing it in so, a, so much a robust and effective way that we all now can look at this dimension of town government as being such a good example of why the quality of life in North Reading is so good. So ladies, congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, 
go with your spouse. Yes, please. And Joanne. Thank you. Did you switch? Yes. All right. All right. Do we all fit? That's how I'm back in. <laughs> Since he may be rededicating himself to your community. Just to read you very briefly the citations, the Certificate of Appreciation, the Select Board, and the Town of North Reading are pleased to present this remembrance of their high regard and appreciation to Judy Hall and Kathy Dardino in recognition of over 11 years of faithful and conscientious <coughs> service as members of the Youth Services Committee. Signed by me as the Chair. Mr. Schultz. You, you guys do a great job for the kids in the community. I know my wife's involved with, with, with a lot of what you guys do as well. And judging by the number of years you guys are on the, uh, this committee, I think you started when you were 12. Is that? Okay. I want to make sure. Guys, you've done a lot of good for the community. You should be proud. And we're lucky to have folks like you out there, citizens like you, that volunteer your time and uh, make a difference, truly make a difference in, the, in our town. Thank you. Agreed. Anyone else? Yeah. It's all good. And I'd just like to say, too, that it's, it's, it spirals, that sort of effort, like Senator Tarr said, it spirals. We've had that resulted in a committee that's still active, that still meets regularly, that still has all these fantastic programs for youth. It's growing. The membership of the kids that are participating is growing. We've seen Amy Lutzkowitz come into the town as a result, and now we have Jennifer Ford in the town as a result. Just those two, just those two um, additions of professional personnel has been incredible for us and incredible for the kids. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Anybody else? Uh, as the new liaison, I am yes. very much looking forward to working with all of you. We'll talk soon. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. And thank you for everyone that joined. And you can stay. Yeah. <laughs> you want to. All right. And then let's get, keep moving forward. We'll skip over the minutes till the end. We're going to still okay? skip the minutes. Okay. Um, public, we do have a joint meeting at 8.15. So let's, let's, to, is anyone here for public comment, actually? All right. So public, so we're done with public comment. <laughs> okay. Um, joint, joint, we'll do board, minute, board members reports at the end. Joint meeting with the Community Planning Commission to discuss 66 Winter Street. And our planner is here, and the members of the, also the members of the CPC are here. And just a very brief handout. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's great. Thank and you, Daniel. It's short. Actually. Sure. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's two pages, Danielle. Oh, I'm sorry, French. <laughs> it's kidding. short. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Take all the time that you need. And you did it in small print. <laughs> I, I cheated a little. <laughs> Get our glasses off. <laughs> talk about 66 Winter Street, which um, in recent months the CPC has been talking about quite a bit as far as um, the idea that potentially the town could have some role in the future redevelopment of this property as a property um, that is very central to the town and could potentially be part of um, an interesting uh, new development. So uh, the owner of the property, Mr. Heffron, um, attended our CPC made meeting on May 14th uh, to discuss, um, sorry, I should start this, to, uh, just to kind of give you the vicinity here, it's, uh, this is the property, 66 Winter Street, in highlighted, and then to back it out a little bit, um, this is what surrounds it, it's a uh, stop and shop property, um, the uh, Papa Gino's Heavenly Donuts and Kitties across the street. So um, Mr. Heffron had come to the CPC um, on May 14th uh, to continue some discussions that we had previously had um, about his vision for the future redevelopment of this property, um, potentially in partnership with the town. And his primary goal um, is to establish a memorial of some kind uh, to his late father. And in pursuit of this, uh, Mr. Heffron is looking to sell his two and a half acre property. Um, he has considered selling to a similar business that's uh, what, what is there now, um, a, a you know, paving company. Um, and he's also looked into privately developing um, some sort of a mixed-use project in accordance with um, the pretty new zoning that we have in place um, that would allow for res residential development um, in some of the highway business zone parcels if it's done as a component of a mixed-use development. He prefers, though, to partner with the town uh, for some type of municipal use uh, or a mix of municipal and another use, um, and he would like to find a use that includes a public gathering space of some kind and contribute to a redevelopment effort um, that, in general, in this area would, would establish a town center, which is something that the CPC has spoken about and studied for, for quite some time and has been looking for opportunities to, to move forward with. He's willing to discuss leasing or selling to the town depending on the time frame. Um, we're not really here so much tonight to talk about the details of that only because um, Mr. Heffron isn't here and we probably would require a different type of setting for that kind of a discussion. But just in terms of background and what we've been talking about so far. Um, so the CPC had uh, discussed the property again at its meeting on June 4th um, to make some recommendations and identify next steps. Um, there, interested potentially in exploring a public-private partnership that would allow for some sharing of um, this and other properties um, for a combination of civic uses and private retail, um, housing or other uses. Uh, the town could own property and lease out some space. Um, examples would be uh, some of the private vendor use um, that will be taking place in Boston City Hall Plaza. Wellesley has an athletic complex that they have a ground lease for um, but it's run by a private operator. Um, something possibly of that nature. Um, private contractors would be hired so the town would not be the operator, um, kind of in the model of Hillview um, or the high school package treatment plant. Um, if a package treatment plant would be needed to support development in this area, um, 66 Winter Street um, would be needed to house it, so it would be a linchpin to development in this area. Um, so it could be to the, really be to the town's advantage to have control of it. Um, the reuse or sale of town hall of the town hall property could also potentially bring in revenue if it were if it were chosen to you know replace the town hall property, um, potentially balancing the loss of commercially zoned property for municipal use. Um, and in terms of next steps, the CPC um, discussed you know discussing this project um, with the select board. Um, you know, in terms of potential use of some funds that that we had obtained at town meeting two years ago, um, which was for a wastewater study and conceptual redevelopment <laughs> plan for this general area of town. Um, we believe that that warrant article meets um, the spirit and the scope of, of, um, of what the CPC would like to do here. So it was, it's $50,000 that we have. Um, the reason the CPC had not yet embarked on that study is because it, 
being that a, a large part of it had to do with identifying um, wastewater solutions, we had been on the assumption that municipal sewer was really never coming to town or was not going to come for a very long time. Um, shortly after that, um, the discussions got very serious about, about there being municipal sewer systems. So not wanting to spend the money in the wrong way, um, we kind of put that on hold to, until we knew more about what was going to be happening with wastewater. So at this point, I, I think, um, you know, here tonight we were hoping to have a discussion about potentially whether the board felt was in agreement with the idea that, um, you know, $50,000 uh, could potentially be, be used for this, um, being that it was given for um, concept conceptual redevelopment of this property. Um, and also, um, the CPC wanted to also recommend potentially putting together an ad hoc committee to move a process forward. Um, and then they would begin, you know, property owner outreach to determine possible partners in redevelopment um, to see, and also what businesses might benefit or um, be supportive of this. There were um, a lot of additional, <laughs> you know, discussions that, that we know would, would need to be had. Um, the facilities master plan, as you know, um, the process is ongoing. The RFP um, has not been released yet. Um, and this, that study would be anticipated to be completed by June. Um, and of course, that study will inform the town about recommended options for facilities, um, potentially including acquiring property if necessary. Um, and, you know, some thoughts and, you know, discussions we've had is that it would be, of course, um, you know, difficult to um, necessarily make a recommendation for how this property could be used for a town facility before that facilities master plan was done. And so, uh, you know, we were uh, obviously, I've, I've put, you know, a few more things in the handout just in terms of um, possible other issues and, you know, challenges that we've identified and talked about. Um, and I, I won't go through everything, but on the back, I also just kind of gave the background of the various CPC studies that have been um, focused on this part of town that have identified this part of town um, that would be in support of the type of redevelopment program that the CPC has in mind. Um, I will turn it over to Warren, who would like to say a little bit more about this, um, and then we can answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. <clears throat> it's interesting that every time we've had uh, hired somebody to look at things like MAPC or, or uh, any of the consultants we brought on board, uh, it's interesting that every, time, every one of them eventually brings us back to this location, saying this is a location where you could actually do something to to solve your no definable town center problem. So, um, and we agree with them that this is in fact the one location and I don't know that there's another one. So this is an opportunity uh, that with some vision, I think that we can create for the town something that will be lasting. Um, Mr. Heffron definitely uh, wants a, a memorial of some kind for his, for his dad, but you'd be amazed at how vested he is in the town. He's very interested in, in the town. The, the business has been in town forever. Uh, and he would like that to like to have a memorial there to uh, to honor his father, and at the same time give something back. Uh, they recent, if you're not aware of it, they recently sold off the uh, the uh, gravel business over there to Lynch, James Lynch. So they don't even run that anymore. But obviously they now have some freedom to do something, and uh, his he has a passion for this, so he's willing to work with us in almost any way. It's not indefinite, his waiting, okay, because he, as uh, Danielle mentioned, he has done some research and he has done some looking into some design, some of which he will give us to use, uh, because I think some of it is very much in line with what we want to do. I think what he needs is for us to tell him, or for this board to indicate that they would support this, and I think then we could sit down with him and put together a plan of some kind to, uh, to uh, move this project forward. And I don't think that he's looking, uh, my understanding from him is that he would like to do a, um, like to have the property be, maybe we could uh, um, have a, have a uh, offer to buy and have it carried out for a period of time, pay interest only for a while, which keeps us from having to come up with any, any large sum of money in the beginning of the project. And then um, somewhere between five and 10 years down the road, consummate the project and the purchase and turn it into a situation similar to um, any of the other projects we have, so as at like the Hillview, where we have uh, <coughs> professionals running the parts of it that we don't wish to run, and yet have a town center that the town would actually own. I know the town prefer to own the, their own property, own the building that they're in, such as they do here. So that there's any number of ways this could be done. He's open to discussion on it. 
but I think before we set a whole committee up and put a whole bunch of people to work on this, we would like to know if the board uh, has, uh, can see this vision and is willing to work with us on it. If you have any questions, please. Mr. Schultz. Well, Warren, what's the acreage of this parcel? It's about two and a half acres. And what's, the, what's his asking price? Well, I don't want to, um, it's, he gave me a rough number. I don't know if I want to put it out there, but it's, it's, I think it's reasonable. And well, it's before I could say yay or nay, I'd have okay. to know what he's. he's. He's looking at approximately two million. Almost a, okay. Just, yeah. just let me actually, I, I don't think we're taking a vote yay or nay yeah. today yeah. at no. all. Yeah. I, 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 know, I know for myself and just reviewing this for the purposes of this meeting, that, that funding wasn't set aside for property acquisition or to deal directly with 66 Winter Street at all. That was right. to study uh, potential multiple businesses in the area inquiring as to some type of an arrangement with multiple businesses in the area. So we're not, we're not prepared to vote on this at all with right. very little, you know, information. Right. Plus one member is not here this evening. Mm -hmm. But but I'm. Um, if I could continue, on. So I'm sure that we're 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 not we're not voting on anything this yeah. evening. We're just we're just getting the J preliminary information from. CDC. Well, I think they're looking for whether the board just uh, whether to form a subcommittee. I, I guess one of my concerns is I, I don't think the town should be in the business of developing property just in general. I think that always it hasn't gone well for us in the past. Um, and a sewer packing plant. Any time I hear that come up, I'm always told it's seven figures. It's over a million dollars to put that in there. With Seward not that far down the road, as far as from a timeline, and literally not that far down the road from Main Street, I don't think it's feasible to even do anything with this until we have a wastewater solution. Um, because I, there's no developer that's going to put a million dollars into a packing plant for a parcel that's two acres. It just it doesn't make sense, especially if they know sewer is on the way. So I, I just think, well, I think it's well-intentioned. I think. The other issue is we're doing a facility master plan. Uh, we're going to speak about it later on the agenda tonight. That's going to say what we need. A lot of it's going to tie into the community center, how many departments that takes out of town hall will tell us how big a town hall has to be. Mm -hmm. I just think we're really jumping the gun. I would hold off on this until we have those questions answered because I just, we're not ready to deal with this right now, in my opinion. Ms. Mr. Walner. So let's review the ask, okay? The ask that they're asking is that the town has already appropriated fifty thousand dollars to study to do a, um, a sewage treatment plan. Part of the language in there was to include looking at the development of that particular area. So that's the ask I think that the CPC is asking for is they just want to inform us that the money's already there and that in fact they're going to exercise that language of looking at the development of the area at the same time they're doing the sewage study, potentially with some sort of model that we can look at. That's one of the asks. They want to be sure we're aware of this. It's not even an ask. They just want to be sure we're aware of that they're going to be exercising that part that's already been uh, set up. The, uh, the, second, the second part is that um, y if you talk about the sewage if, if coming down from Andover, I'd like to think it's coming sooner or later, but it, it's probably going to be later than sooner. And so I don't agree with that at all. Um, Mr. Yeah. Schultz. Just telling Mr. you what Schultz. I've learned yeah. from asking people. Mr. Schultz. Including yeah. people. Mr. Walner has the mic. Yeah. So um, I, I don't think we can count on that. And I, again, the money is already there to do this facility study. So we should be embracing that and be allowing them to, to, to give them some sort of affirmation that we feel good about that study. Again, it's already been approved. The other thing I'd like to point out, too, is that I've been involved with all the studies that are on the backside from the very beginning over the years and have watched a number of people in this room with a lot of enthusiasm talking about developing that particular area of town. There's been, and it's, we've seen it time and time again, all the different studies, all eyes point here, and it was even more affirmed last summer when we did a survey of the town, we had something like 600 responses, and if you were to put those in the order of number of responses, the amount of people that went through that survey, which was very difficult, by the way, the amount of energy and time that people put into a firm that they wanted to see something happen in this part of town is, was like 66% uh, of the town voted this way. Informally, anecdotally, but it was very clear. So again, I think the town has a great interest in seeing something happen here. I don't think the time frame of waiting forever is realistic, but I think that also, if we want to make this a smooth effort, the other ask, the other thing they're suggesting is that sooner than later, we create a task force among different departments who have ownership in this, CPC, select board, EDC, finance, that over time we start to study this because sooner or later we're going to be 
we should be dealing with this issue because it is something that the town wants and it's also our demographic is going this way. Our demographic is becoming seniors, more and more adults. The adults need a place in town where they can play. We don't have it. it we don't have it downtown. This is not novel. This is not new. We see it all the way around us. We should be giving our support to them to continue with things that have already been improved and let them know that we'd like to see this go forward. And to that point, I know um, Mrs. Hurlbut had her hand up. That, that wasn't what those, that funding was approved for. So focusing directly on that parcel, that I totally disagree with that. And in fact, that, that study was halted because we were informed we were waiting on the, the facilities master plan. So they weren't going to inspect because of the, what was going on back and forth with Andover, but also we were going to be working on something totally different where all the different stakeholders were involved in providing information for that. And I should have taken, I should have taken that, that particular piece up first before we went into this joint meeting. But that, to, to my recollection, was not what that, that funding was for, was focusing on a partnership with one particular parcel so oh no I, I I wasn't saying that right. I wasn't I, I'm not even talking about Heffron right. him I, I think acquisition or partnership or all of those things would have to be a totally separate vote of the town and I'm not dis I don't disagree with you that a lot of people a lot of people would probably show up and want that and a lot of people like myself who did the survey would want to see some development in that area and appreciate all of the ac effort that you're putting into turning all of this over but we we halted the study i recall you you saying that you weren't going to be utilizing the funds for that particular study because all of the other wheels were in motion you're waiting to see what the results of those things were those planning efforts were if Mrs. I the, gonzalez the, uh, oh i'm sorry uh, yeah if i may the the uh, there are other people in the area that have expressed an interest in being a part of this other other stakeholders other landowners so I don't think that we, we wouldn't be focusing just on the, that piece of property either. We would right. be looking at all those other properties because I think that the, that the real value here the, or the real result is going to be that the other stakeholders in the area will get involved and that we will actually develop something pretty nice here. So there's also the possibility that uh, Stop and Shop is just kind of plugging along with uh, what they have going over there. I think if they see something happening that they think is exciting that they'll get involved. Um, but somebody has to start somewhere. Um, every one of the uh, very successful projects that we have in town, from Ipswich River Park and all those, started with a group of people who had a vision, brought that vision forward and worked with us. So it's very difficult to do that, um, and yet we're willing to work on that if we can get some support. Mrs. Gonzalez. I, I was just going to um, have you clarify, because there seems to be a difference an opinion about the 50,000 and the, uh, um, I just want to clarify that. Do you, Mr. Mr. Gilbert, are you prepared to speak about the funding, the funding that was appropriated for the $50,000 study I, and maybe more definition in terms of what that, that was for? So, and admittedly, this is not something that I've investigated until this evening, so I did just shared you know, my initial feedback with the town, with the town planner, but the article, and I'm just going to read from the article, um, it described funding that would um, be used to fund a redevelopment concept plan, including but not limited to wastewater treatment options for a section of Route 28 in the vicinity of Route 62 and including any cost incidental or related thereto in accordance with recommendations made in a land use and economic development study performed by Metropolitan Area Planning Council and completed in 2015. So that's the article and the motion reads, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $50,000 to fund a redevelopment concept plan including but not limited to wastewater treatment options for a section of Route 28 in the vicinity of Route 62 and including any costs incidental or related thereto. So I think the article refers to a plan which expanded beyond Route 28, yes. if I remember it correctly. 
the motion is a little more specific, talking only about Route 28. It does say wastewater and other redevelopment, obviously, so I don't think we're limited to wastewater. But that's what the article says. And I mean, if we could acquire the parcel for fifty thousand dollars, I don't. I think you'd get our approval, right? <laughs> I think it was intended for something different than acquisition of real estate. I I, I never. I'm sorry if I pledged. I'm just that. looking yeah. at what we were yeah. presented this. I, I saw it as way to study a package treatment plan and a way to study that area mm -hmm. as a larger yeah. picture and Heffron is just one part of that picture. Yes. Absolutely. So I don't see this as a, um, this is not to purchase this property at all. This money would be used strictly to develop a plan to redevelop that area. That's precisely what we want to do. Now, um, and again, we, you know, I, I, um, you know, I love Mr. Schultz's enthusiasm for getting sewer down and I, more than anybody you could ever find here, I hope he's right. You know, and he probably knows that. I mean, how 15 years on the Wastewater Advisory Committee. It's, you know, I mean, that's a lot of time put in trying to get this to happen. So uh, I would uh, love it to be as quickly as possible because it will make such a huge difference in this town. But we do have to plan for the eventuality. And um, it, it, there's some time frame involved in developing a piece of property like this, building it and developing it. Any of the piping that went in would certainly be put in in such a way that it would be easily, uh, easy to hook up to a sewer a main that came down the street. Be, uh, that would be primary in the engineering of it, so that it, when it did happen, it would be a simple hookup. Uh, within hours <laughs> of getting that pipe on the main street, you could be over there with it because everything would be figured out that way. So whether the, if, but if it turned out that for reasons beyond our control, the, the sewer did not come down in a reasonable time, package treatment plan is an option and again it gets paid for by the people that use it not by the town anytime you have a sewer system even a municipal one um, the people that live on septic systems are not paying for that sewer system the only thing they would pay normally is their share of the town's cost for the town's use of the system other than that they don't pay it's the users of the system that pay and it would be the same thing with the package treatment plan Mr. Schultz. If a private owner is ready to develop this, let him develop it. I, I, I don't know why we would discourage Mr. Heffron. If he has plans for a mixed-use facility, let, go. I mean, we would welcome that. That's private development. It's private capital. We would welcome that as a town. I, it, just because $50,000 was appropriate doesn't mean we have to spend it. I, I just think I keep going back to the sewer packing plant. No one is going to spend seven figures on a sewer packing plant in that area. That is never going to happen. I, I can't see it. Especially if they know there's an idea that sewer's coming down the street. So why we, wouldn't it make more sense to do this study after we have a better idea of the time frame for sewer? I think we're going to know more within the next 12 months the time frame on sewer. I think then is the time to do a study. I just think we're, we're putting the cart in front of the horse because of the, the, ch the chance we have through Andover mm -hmm. to the Greater Lawrence Sewer District of getting sewer that we never have had in the past. I mean, that's something that is... And Mr. O'Leary would tell you, I mean, we've never had this opportunity before. This is something that, you well, know. Well, actually, we did. Many years ago, we had the opportunity to get involved in Salem when they put theirs in for $100,000. We could have been hooked up to the Salem oh. Stewart treatment system. It's South Essex Storage. And the Board of oh. Selectmen voted against it. Well, there you go. But right now, we have an option that we haven't had in a long time. <laughs> and no one's going to put seven figures into a sewer packing plant knowing there's a chance sewer's coming down the street. I just think it's a waste of $50,000. We don't have to spend the money because we appropriated it. Well, $50,000 is a position at Town Hall. But the, but the situation that will exist then is it will be developed as it would be developed as a private development of some kind, or maybe not, because there's there's a, a pretty substantial cost to de doing a development like that. Right. And um, he may, you know, it may be that he it's just easier for him to sell to a uh, to a trucking company, and that's what we'll have there, just like we have out on. Concord Street, and that's what we'll live with for the and rest of our lives. Because we don't, it's because we don't have and sewage. The opportunity will disappear. So, uh, what we're trying to do is work. This was this is an opportunity that came along. We're trying to work with it the best we can. Mm -hmm. I believe that Ms. Teffron will will work with us if we show movement in the right direction. And if we're not going to do that, then I would say probably that you are correct. We'll just end up with a with a commercial development of some kind there. And, that will and be I think happy. the I know they are going to be looped in, but the EDC really needs to be looped into this too for economic development purposes. They do a lot of work on trying to isolate parcels. Mm -hmm. And I've sat in those meetings and I know it always comes back to wastewater, like why we can't do anything of, of substance in this town. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's, I just don't well, think someone's going to. Well, the plan that he has, the plans that he has do include on-site disposal. That he should build that. Well, I, 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, Mrs. Harrell, but. Um, I noticed the facility's master plan process on the <clears throat> we really only just got started. The RFQ should go up hopefully this week. We anticipate having a consultant on board by the end of the summer. Right? It's going to be a fairly fast track program. Part of the RFQ um, uh, is to look at uh, all properties in town and all towns own properties that are wetlands of greater than two plus acres. So uh, I think it's. I guess I would feel uh, a little bit more comfortable if we had a little bit more time to get the facility's master plan underway. Mm -hmm. Because we really just started. Um, okay. and, and, and I think that this is not suggesting that this not, might not be a discussion uh, that the facility's master plan committee might have a uh, consultant have with Concerning that property, we can't have it right now. Mm -hmm. Yep, I understand that. I, I think that you know that's an, that getting that facilities master plan done is important. But I, I think that probably the um, over the past, I mean, I've been involved in any number of master plan developments, and pretty much every one of them has a couple of uh, uh, of the same items in them. And that is providing a new town hall and providing a west side fire station and all those things. So, so I would not expect the new one to be any different than that. So one of the possibilities of this project is be to reserve space for that so we would have it already in hand. Before the uh, facilities master plan uh, developed in uh, RFQ, one of the things that I did, I, I'm chairman of the uh, was I went and sat down with the people in Wellington and just went through this process. And I asked them, where would the changes be that they might make? What would they do differently? What worked really well, et cetera? We talked about the whole thing. I read the report. I read every minute, set of minutes of their committee meetings, et cetera. And um, I don't even know where I'm going to go now. Uh, <laughs> but I really, I really think that Oh, so I too have served on a lot of those committees, including the one that Bob Nasseri shared at one point. Um, and I understand that they generally don't go anywhere. And in talking with Wilmington, they said that this was the hardest part of the process because you have a change in town administration and boards of selectmen and everything else. And so you have to continually uh, be cheerleaders for basically 20 years worth of real estate projects in one phase or another. And, and as soon as you lose that impetus and stop talking about it and stop walk, working towards this goal, you're right, it's going to gather dust. And, and I think that the people on this committee are aware of that. Are we going to be able to do it any better? Who knows? But I think we're more aware of those problems than perhaps Bob or some of the other committees have been. Thank so, Miss, were you looking? Were you looking to just, pr you know, present this concept to the board this evening, um, just to make the board aware and coming back with something more firm in terms of what your thought would be as this rolls along as well as the the RFP rolls along as well? Or, or yeah, or I think what I what's I, your timeline and what's Mr. Heffron's timeline? Well, he um, his timeline was uh, was uh, was kind of close. But again, my, my belief is that if, if he sees movement in the right direction, that he'll extend his timeline. So, but if he sees opposition to it with no movement, he'll continue on <coughs> in his own way. So I think that's the, uh, that's not something that you know, we can do anything about. So uh, what we've done is try to put some, something together to give you an idea. Uh, if we would, uh, if we, if we were to hope, we would have hoped that we could use that uh, some of that funding to develop that plan that you're asking for to the point where we can give you hard numbers and figures and things. And, and again, we've done the research with MEPC, all the different studies that have been done. We have a ton of information, um, as well as the input from the town, the people themselves. We have a lot of stuff that we have all together in one spot. Right. We now just have to develop it into a, a plan. Uh, but that requires some funding because that's not something that we can do in-house. Mr. Gilbert, I, I do want to clarify. I was able to place my hands on the uh, 
this, or find electronically the study that the original warrant article referred to, and it most definitively included this property. So from a standpoint of whether this stretch is eligible, I, I, it's my opinion that it would be. And again, the language is broad. It talks about a re redevelopment concept plan, including but not limited to wastewater treatment options. Not just this parcel, though. It wasn't limited to this. Because no, I recall were, our discussion about multiple parcels. Kind of that that were, there were a number of that parcels. That were to be the focus yeah. of the study, because the whole point was a, a treatment plan That's right. that could serve that entire business community in that location, a, lo a localized treatment plan. That's what we talked about. Well, we would probably w we would probably want to do that anyway, because as, as I get, uh, there are other stakeholders in the area that are interested in being involved in the process, but they won't do anything unless they see it move forward as well. Yes. And I so, recall you telling us we need to put some money yeah. in too, too to get this yeah. moving along. Right. I recall you telling us that. Yeah. So, so that would be my hope. Uh, but if I can leave with you tonight the concept, and if you can uh, come up with an answer or. or, or Give us, let us know to come to another meeting and discuss it further. But how much more we can do at this point to give you a better idea would not, you know, without some, without some funds and without some, um, getting some real planning done for you. Mr. O'Leary? Did you? Hi, Mr. O'Leary. Well, it looked like you want to say something. Mr. Gilberto has already basically confirmed that this would be an acceptable use of those. He didn't quite say that, but he said that in terms of what he read. It was within the scope. Mr. O'Leary, yeah, did you want Yeah, it was within the scope. Was yeah, and I do, and I, and I apologize for, uh, for arriving late, but I had a commitment I had to keep. Um, and, and excuse me up front if I'm going to be redundant. Um, this particular parcel, along with some other, but this particular parcel is sort of a, a, a linchpin. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. keystone to, to the area there, stop and shop. Um, to whatever we're thinking about, or we'll think about yeah. in relation to what we hope for some uh, future economic development on Route 28. I mean, uh, it's a prime piece of real estate. Uh, if we can acquire it, great. You know, if we can work with the the owner, even better, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I know that Mr. Heffron is uh, patient, has been patient. Uh, also been a little bit all over the board as far as what he was thinking of doing and wanting to do, but certainly willing to, to partner with uh, the community in some fashion to help uh, fulfill what our vision may be. Uh, and we're fortunate that he's in a position where he can wait a little bit uh, if he sees things going in the right direction. Uh, you know, it, obviously sewerage is, is, is key to the economic development route 28. You know, when is that coming? I mean, to, I've been involved for a, a long time. Like I said, I first got elected in 1988, and part of my platform was, you know, sewerage. Uh, so, to Abby's point, it takes decades at times to keep keep it in the forefront, keep talking about it, and hopefully something something happens. Um, you know, what's going to happen with Andover? You know, it's still five, ten years away from really coming to fruition. You know, if we're looking to jumpstart something here. And I stated it, you know, a year or two ago, that I think, you know, the stop and shop property is a linchpin, is, is including this property. Um, you know, I thought the town needed to make the investment in a package treatment plant on Route 28 uh, in order to serve as an impetus. I mean, private individuals are not going to build a package treatment plant for surrounding properties and be held hostage to a private enterprise as opposed to a community. You know, so, you know, is it a wise investment? I think this is what we need to look at and study. You know, personally, you know, I think that, you know, we're a little ways away uh, and further away than I want to be from, you know, tying into uh, Greater Lawrence Sewer. Yes, it's, a, it's feasible, it's, uh, it's doable, it's expensive, but that's okay. It's an investment that we need to make, but we still have a lot more work to do. Um, you know, that being said, you know, if we can you know, secure this location along with, and again, we had some conversation uh, show a few months ago uh, in relation to the Stop and Shop property as to what their willingness was to make it available to the town. And again, this all goes to the, I forget what the, the new committee is, it used to be FUMP, Facilities Use Master Plan Committee. But I mean, they were looking to talk to us about a long-term lease at Stop and Shop for municipal purposes with the option to buy. Is that something we want to look at too, in conjunction with a whole bunch of other things? Um, you know, 
I think it's probably wise we have the money appropriated to, uh, I guess someone disagrees. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think it's wise if we have this opportunity uh, to, to move forward to see if this, what really is feasible. And uh, if Mr. Heffern's willing to work with us, all the better. So, I mean, we have the money. If we, we have the right vision and a, and a similar vision, I think that what's important is, is that we have a vision that's um, where the majority of people can come together. That's what we're looking for. Um, th then it's, it's worth doing. You know, it's worth doing. So, uh, again, as far as this particular parcel, it's key. Stop and shop is even more key in my mind. Yep. And um, we have an opportunity in both it both of those instances that I think we need to seize and take a look at and engage uh, more conversation, particularly with Stop and Shop, as to what we can do you know, and how we can assist. Because I believe the community has to make the investment in order for it really to take hold on Route 28. So. Mr. Schultz. I agree with Select Board Member O'Leary's conclusion about making 28. I just think we're coming about it from the actually totally wrong angle here. The biggest problem we have when we isolate parcels is wastewater. We all agree with that. It's a lack of a wastewater solution. We have a, roughly $20 million in the bank from the sale of the Pulte property. That should all go into the ground with sewer. We start spending $2 million on this parcel, another million for a packing plant. No, that money should go in the ground to get our commercial tax base raised and get real things built on 28. It can happen. It's not, I don't think it's going to take five years, I'd agree. Ten years, I think, is a little bit long. Mr. Heffron, I believe, Warren, correct me if I'm wrong, he had a plan or a photo of like a three-story building that had like retail on the bottom, office on the top? Yeah, he had some, uh, he had some concepts, uh, some conceptual stuff that he did, uh, so, that he had done up. But basically all they really were were pictures of a building in Wilmington. Okay. And, uh, you, know, you know, basically the buildings that were already built by a company that, that he knew. Why aren't we? They weren't drawn for that particular site. Okay, but he, that's like when he was conceptualizing something like that. Right. Why aren't we just encouraging him to build that? Um, because it doesn't accomplish, first of all, his vision of what he wants for his father. And, well, uh, and, and, he, yeah. and he does have an interest in, in, in this community and putting something up there that has the leg the, a legacy of some kind. But where, these things are all great, but where are we, to me, if we're taking money away from putting commercial sewerage in, no, no, I it's don't, the we wrong, don't, we don't, I, we don't, yeah. We don't need to do that. But where's the money going to come from? That you're gonna, well, it's $3 million to buy that parcel, not even the construction no, no. costs or another whatever. I'm just um, saying, you got to pay for it. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think, well, I think, right, I, th we I think, Mr. Sh Mr. Schultz, I think they're here to say they want to explore this as part yeah. of that $50,000. I think it's clear from what Mr. Gilberto explained that they are permitted to utilize, I think they were asking us for permission, which you really don't need. Right but they also wanted to basically explain to us, this is part of what we're gonna look at. Not the whole thing, but part of what we're gonna be looking at. They're gonna be utilizing those funds, and this is part of that study that they're gonna be doing. But then they are gonna come back yeah. and give us the, the finer points yeah. of that, I would assume, because if this has yeah. really just been presented as something that they've been taking. I just don't think it's something that's feasible, that's all. I, I think it's well-intentioned. I just think it's going to be yet another study that collects dust somewhere here at Town Hall. I don't believe that yeah. will happen. We're going, to, we're, going to, so we're going to, if we have the ability to move forward, we're going to try put together a, an ad hoc committee of, some, of, of stakeholders in the area, people who are interested in seeing this happen, and to work with us. So we'll get as much, so we'll get basically volunteer help. Similar to what happened in some of the other great projects that we did in town here. Yeah. Volunteer help will do some of the legwork and get some of this stuff figured out. We just need it for the professional f fees, the professional parts of it, so that what we bring you is true, you know, can be supported, engineering facts. So that's what we want to do. I think that if we do that, um, if we show that we're moving forward, at it, Mr. Heffron will see that we're serious about it, and then he will wait and he will get involved, and maybe to more of an extent than what he's talked about so far. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't but say. But why, why are we, I'm, maybe I'm not understanding so this. Well, Mrs. Schultz, Mrs. Gonzalez yeah. ha, has, okay. a, yeah. has, a, has a question, and I, I, think, I think we don't, we'll, we'll get more information as the map exactly. is studied and be able to maybe ask more detailed. They really don't have any 
thing to say other than to let's look at it. But why, why Mrs. Gonzalez has, has for a private a, property. Right? So I'm just trying. So you're coming to get a feel of the board. Is that how I'm understanding? Uh, you you want to know? Well, we come for two reasons. If we one, feel we like we would be on board to yes pursue this, to hear yes. about it, to I mean, my feeling is why not look into it? I mean. That doesn't mean I'd be on board with it, but yeah. we won't know. Well, the question is, do you have the vision? Can you can you see something for the town there that it doesn't right. have now? The one thing that every, that every single study we've ever done has asked us for. Can you find some place to do this? And this is the place. And if this place goes, there isn't another place. That's it. Then we will be what we are now forever. That's it. So, so we, we do have to move along on okay. the agenda, but I think it's pretty <coughs> clear that, that you should go for it but okay. not, you know, ter in terms of, you know, binding. Obviously, they can't any, you can't anyway, but studying the topic and coming back. My, my one question, which I know you can't answer, is let's just say the sewerage does come in five to ten years down the line, which is what we're hoping, even though that may be, we may be more like 20 years and, you know, millions and millions of dollars that, you know, that we have to figure out where we're coming up with that. But would a, would a business want to do you know, put some sort of investment or engage in some sort of an agreement for to pay for this when they know that, you know, if they just wait or if they're just patient that mm -hmm. that potential mm -hmm. to connect to, you know, city sewer is available to them in right. a few, you know, a few years. How do, how do you determine that? And okay, well, first of all, depending upon the rate at which this goes along. I wasn't expecting you to answer, so. Oh, well, I do, actually, <laughs> I do have since you took the answer, thing. Okay? <laughs> because because this, isn't been, this isn't totally, I've, I've been talking to, to Mr. Heffron for a long time about this, and I know he has a passion for it. And I, and I don't want to misrepresent him. I'd love for him to tell you himself, but I think he did at one point, his passion. That, he, that, that he's willing to make the, help make this work if, it's, if, uh, if, if we do our part. So first of all, there's a possibility, because some soil testing's been done, that you could do a relatively standard septic system for a good portion of this. So you could put that sewer th off for a while. And if it turned out that it was a problem, uh, maybe then you build a package treatment plant. But the package treatment plant um, needs to be figured in so that when the additional properties get on board, we can handle everybody. This site will support itself. It's all the other properties that we want to bring on board they are going to require the package treatment plan. So I think that if we um, give this a chance and, and, and do that study, we're going to find the real answers to those as to how much we can do. And then we're going to also, it was, if the project begins to move forward, those, the people that have expressed an interest in the past see that, then we're going to get their input and we're going to get their support and then we'll see how that works out. I mean, it can grow. And, and, it, and I also believe, as Mr. O'Leary said, that, that Stop and Shop, I think, they'd be in, I think they'd be interested in being a part of this. It's an exciting thing. It's a great location for them. Even if they had to move back there, they would have, you know, a traffic situation that they, you couldn't buy anyway, you know? Okay. So. Well, I think we're going to move along. Okay. Thank you for, oh, just, just, are we good or everyone good? And I also think, when are you coming back to us? What's your timeline? Um, Giving us more details about this. Okay. Well, first of all, we've got to take a look and see. Um, I want to get a, 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 I want to get an ad hoc committee together. A few people, some, some specific people that actually have some um, some interest and some experience in this kind of a project, to, so that we can get some free advice, if you will, or some free input to start moving this along, and then uh, so that we can bring you something a little more concrete. I would also like at the same time to um, schedule, meet with Ms. Tafron again, and schedule a meeting for him to come here so we can discuss in a little more detail some of Mr. Schultz's concerns. I mean, I take them seriously, okay? Yeah. And um, so that we can give you better answers on those. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Um, I know we have a public hearing, but we did just mention that um, the master plan process, and while you're here, is that a long? Is that something we could address right now, um, just in terms of? 
Do you mean the, the status of the community yes, master plan? Yes, you were just going to give us an update on that. So. Oh, sure. Yes, um, so, yes, the, um, the scope right now. The plan. I'm sorry, Danielle. The scope oh, are you talking, I'm sorry, are you talking about the facilities master plan? That's what I was, oh, are you finished with your, excuse I'm not me. part of that. Oh, no, I'm that's sorry. okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you, are you finished with your presentation? Yes, oh, I am. Okay, because yes. it's in here. You mentioned it in here, so I figured you might be doing Oh, no, I just, um, no, I wanted to mention it because I know okay. it's related, but I'm, I'm not really qualified to all right, well, Could I ask you. her one question, though, oh, that I think dude. relates to her? <laughs> if, you, if you looked at all these studies and you had them all, when do you expect mm -hmm. them to be done about? Even this one we just talked about. When, approximately calendar-wise, when do you expect them to all to kind of arrive? Our community master plan, we expect to be having a final presentation in September. Um, I don't want to speak to the facilities master plan, but is it potentially? I, maybe I shouldn't even answer <laughs> questions about the facilities. I'm not really. I'll, I'll leave that one to you, Abby. Um, and then, as far as the wastewater study, um, we would basically pull out our original RFP that we had prepared. Um, initially, we would just make some edits. We would be looking to send it out within the next few weeks. and get a consultant on board within probably a couple of months, maybe six months worth of work um, would be my, my, my guess for time So end of the year that. maybe? Mm -hmm. Next yes. spring. Yes. Next spring. Yes. yes. So early, early. <laughs> Next spring sounds Next fine. Spring, 2000. Um, I would like it to be done a little sooner okay. than that, but. Okay. All right. Realistically. Right. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So we're about a half an hour behind on our next <laughs> next order of business. I can't be blamed for this so, yet. So <laughs> <public> <laughs> now, which is a, a public hearing on fiscal year 2020 water rates. Yep. We have Mr. Clark. Good evening. Welcome, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Thank you for being so patient. Thank you. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, through you, so joining us this evening is the Water Superintendent, Mark Clark. Um, he uh, is here on behalf of the Department of Public Works, but is also able to report um, feedback from the town's Water Commission, which I understand met earlier this evening, to consider um, a recommendation to the board relative to the water rate for fiscal year 2020, which would be effective July 1st, 2019. Um, there was a report that was provided by Mr. Clark that was in the meeting packet. He also has some PowerPoint slides, which I'm sure he will expeditiously go through this evening, especially since the news is good. The message. <laughs> well, the news is good with regard to the rate, uh, but not and not unexpected. But I'll turn it over to Mr. Clark. Sure. Thank you. I'm Mark Clark, Water Superintendent. I'm also joined by Andrew Street, who's from the Water Commission here. Um, we did. Mr. Ragucci's memo get distributed? Uh, yes, so yes. For, the, for the board members, yeah, it's in the packet. We also have a, a memo from the chair of the Water Commission, Vin Ragucci. So this is the water rate and capital plan hearing for FY 2020. Um, just very quickly, the a couple of uh, updates. Um, the Andover uh, situation, I know you guys were talking a little bit about wastewater, but in terms of the water project with Andover, last year when we were here, we had just signed the 99-year agreement with Andover. Um, so what that basically does for us is it kicked us down. We were paying above Andover's tier one rate. Now we're paying 95% of their residential tier one rate. Uh, it also limited the maximum annual increase in any of the first 10 years of that agreement to a maximum of 2.5% per year. So even if Andover goes up 10% on their water rates, the rate they charge us can only go up 2.5% per year. It also included an annual credit of $95,300 per year for the first 10 years, and that's being credited as to us monthly on the water bills that we uh, received from them. So what we did, uh, we had filed the draft environmental impact report with the, the state, with MEPA. Um, this changed, and that draft EIR, we were going to the MWRA for our water and the MWRA for our sewer. We filed a notice of project change with MEPA, basically saying that we're looking at going to handover for the water. Um, and basically taking the wastewater and putting it on a little bit of a slower track so that we can move the water forward more quickly. Uh, we've received comments from the notice of project change. We're working on just assembling some responses to those and then finally what's known as the final environmental impact report or the FEIR, which will also serve as we also need a second permit, which is the Interbasin Transfer Act. We need to increase from the one and a half million gallons a day we currently have 
Um, so the FEIR will also serve as the application for the interbasin transfer permit increase. Uh, we're working on one of the issues we're facing is citing a booster chlorination facility on the north side of Main Street. We've talked to a couple properties owners there. We're still trying to uh, just finalize that siting. Um, we are we own property where the other interconnection is off Central Street. So basically, what we're looking to do is the chlorine. I've mentioned this a few times. The chlorine level, once the water gets here from Andover, is, is fairly low. We need to maintain a chlorine residual all the way to the farthest end. Say, think about the Thompson Country Club end of town. So we need to basically add chlorine again to the water as it comes into North Reading. Um, we have some water mains that are in design at this point. So there's a section of Main Street from Burroughs Road down to North Street, and then further south from Nichols Street down to Park Street. We're going to be looking to upgrade the size of the water main in those sections of uh, Main Street. We'll also be looking to replace the water main in North Street, basically from Low Road right in front of Town Hall here, and up towards the Country Club, uh, up to about Country Club Road. Uh, we we'll also have a, a water main design from Mount Vernon Street. It's not specifically associated with the Andover project, but I'll touch on that just a little bit later. Uh, the other major project we've had going on is the water meter project. So the project started about May of 2018 and it's wrapping up just about this time. Basically it was to replace the 1990s vintage water meters we have with these, the term is smart meter that's out there. And basically rather than reading to the nearest thousand gallons, we now get readings down to a tenth of a gallon. And rather than getting readings every 90 days if we come out and plug onto your house, we're now getting readings back every hour. Um, what you're seeing is kind of the graph in the middle of there. The uh, blue is what our, our water smart, which is kind of our, uh, our software that oversees this. The blue is what it considers to be normal usage. The orange in this particular case is what it considered to be leakage on the property. And you can see that kind of, the kind of jagged line underneath the, uh, the graph there. You can see how it drops off fairly sharply. What, what it's showing here is there was actually just a flapper valve on a toilet that didn't see. And underneath it says there were 741 gallons used on this particular day. 672 of those gallons, about 90% of that water, was lost as water leakage. The, uh, the owner of the property was able to recognize that and, uh, and fix it, and the water use drops off dramatically after it was repaired. Where we are right now, we have 4,929 meters in town, 4,807, about 97.5% are currently being read uh, remotely with the radio system. Um, of the 122 that aren't being read, there are 17 that are either demolished houses or just long-term vacancies. Uh, residents may be in, in health care facilities or things that we uh, haven't been able to get into yet. And then there are 105 that we're still working to get into. The uh, installer is still in town. Uh, we just met with them today. Uh, we, you know, we're going to get that number down, but it's not going to go down to zero, but it will be under 100 by the end of under this, or, this week or next week. I do just want to... I've done this a bunch of times. Every time I come here is just make a pitch for this Water Smart. Um, I have no vested interest in it, but uh, it's just an excellent program that's out there. And uh, what you can see on the bottom is just a graph. So we rolled it out in December of last year. We're about six months into it. We have, uh, we just passed today over 450 people signed up. So it's about 9.4% of the people in town are uh, actually signed up. So you can see we rolled it out in December very slow. A couple little, little bumps at the beginning were after we came to the selectmen and we made a couple reports here, people signed up. The big jump you're seeing in February and March is we, we put a mailer in the, uh, the February water bills. A lot of people signed up. A um, little bump on the end now, we put a bill in, a stuffer in the May water bills and people signed up. Just, I just want to point out that little bump in the middle there between the two big increases. We call that the Jane Brooks bump because she posted something on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, we actually had 40 or, people, 40 or 50 people sign up just in response. She's our that, best advocate. And then right I heard there. she moved out of town because and the water rates were too high. <laughs> <laughs> so just really quickly, kind of a quick look backwards. Where are we in the water department? Um, we have a couple of different sources of money. One being the Stickney Fund, those of you that are familiar, the Stickney well was contaminated back in the uh, 1980s. We got a settlement from that. We still have about $135,000 from that settlement. And then we have what's called the Water Department Infrastructure, Infrastructure Stabilization Fund. Uh, if you jump down towards the bottom, just in June last week, last Monday night, we transferred another 512000 which was <coughs> certified retained earnings from FY18 into that fund. Water. Uh, Department infrastructure, yeah, the stabilization fund is at 2.4 million. Total we have in reserve funds right now is about 2.5 million dollars. Keep going the wrong way. 
So let's look backwards. Look at the current year. Uh, I, I always like to compare this year to last year. And uh, kind of something that jumped out at me was if you look at uh, the June for FY 2018, the second column, the year to date amount, that's how much we actually billed for in FY 2018 and FY 2019. You can see that FY 19 is actually down about $200,000 below the billing in FY 18. Um, I know we came here, we said we're putting in new water meters. The new water meters are going to generate revenue because they're more accurate than the old water meters. Given everything in the year from one year to the next is exactly the same, that is a case. And you can see in the other three quarters at the bottom of this, you see that the uh, FY19, there actually was an increase over FY18 in three of the four quarters. That uh, second quarter I'll get to in just a minute. So what's, what's causing the difference between the, the, the two years? Two kind of substantial factors. One, FY18, the number of days in the bill was slightly longer than 365, and in FY19, it was actually a couple days short of 365 days. And you say, well, that, what, what's the, what difference does that make? Well, if one year is one year long and one year is one year short, you got 2% difference in billable days. 2% on a, a $4.3 million budget is, it's a lot of money. It's $86,000. So that's a portion of that. The other thing, and I didn't really realize this, I knew demands were down last October, November, December. Um, I'll just share this with you. I, f I found this going back and researching. Weather is the single biggest driver for us in terms of how much money we generate. If we have a wet summer, we don't sell as much water, obviously. People aren't irrigating as much. If we have a very dry summer, we sell a lot of money and we're very much into the black that fiscal year. What this is showing, and it's kind of hard to read, but if you look down to that very bottom line, July to December 2018, six month period, it was the 124th driest of the 124 years of record, which means it was the first wettest. It was the wettest six month period. And they're actually saying that for the full year of 2018, this didn't get a lot of publicity, but the full year of 2018 for the state of Massachusetts was the number one precipitation of 124 years of record. Subsequently, we go back October, November, December, which basically reflects kind of August, September, October water use. Because there was so much rain during last summer, we didn't sell as much water, which is why you're seeing that quarter two uh, kind of decrease in, in water revenue. I did want to just bring this up. We've had a very wet spring as well. North Reading does have water restrictions in effect right now. Every summer, our stage zero or our base condition is that it is odd even watering. Um, so even though it's been very wet, typically this time of year we would have come before you and asked for at least a stage one water use restriction to be put in place. Uh, we do have some, some sort of restriction in place. <clears throat> Just quickly to go through the budget, so now that was looking back, looking currently, and then looking forward to FY 2020. Um, I just want to point out that the handout I gave to you on the very bottom, there was an error and there was a typo in it. I had the same uh, debt service in FY20 as it was in FY19. So this is just a corrected view of that. But you can see the budget for FY20 is $4.44 million. I just want to really highlight where are the changes in the budget. So I, the ones that are highlighted, uh, I'm just going to talk about the three that are big negatives. Energy, electricity, other supplies, and other public work supplies. So obviously as we're tending more and more to Andover, we're producing less and less water ourselves. We produce less water, it means we're not pumping as much. We're not pumping as much, it means our electrical costs are decreasing. So we started reflecting that in our budget. Same thing, you drop down to other supplies. If we're not treating as much water, we're not using as many chemicals. The, so the cost of us to treat water drops off. Um, the other public work supply, we typically carry about $25,000 in our budget for water meters and water meter supplies. We have brand new water meters in town. So we basically dropped that line down as well. Um, and then the two that are increasing, purchase of water from Andover. Uh, we did factor in a 2.5% rate increase from Andover, assuming they're going to go up at least that much in their own. And then we also factored in that we're probably going to be buying, as our wells are tailing off, we produce less and less water. We'll be buying about 5% more water from Andover. So that's, that's why you see a 7.6% jump in the Andover purchase of water cost. Uh, municipal water testing, there's a, uh, another program out there, it's called the Uncontaminate, Unregulated Contaminant Monitoring Rule, and we're subject to some fairly stringent testing 
next this year and into next year just to comply with that. It, basically, the federal government looks to generate new contaminates in drinking water to regulate, so they make us test for different things that haven't been regulated in the past. Uh, indirect costs, again, we've talked about this in the past. Indirect costs were the enterprise fund, different departments we rely on for different, uh, different things, finance director, town administrator, the, uh, the, the town uh, council, different things. So we just account for that in the water department budget. The last couple of years, we've been factoring in a 3% increase in that. So if you look at uh, FY19 to FY20, there's a 3% increase in the overall bottom line of that line. Item. So where, what are the recommendations we're coming down to? Basically recommending a flat uh, situation going into next year. From FY18 to FY19, we kept the rates stable. FY19 to FY20, we're looking to keep them stable again. As I mentioned earlier, we, we just uh, voted $512,000 into the stabilization fund. I anticipate we'll be uh, next June putting some money into the stabilization fund again. Um, I don't think it's going to be quite that much, but we've put over $2 million into that stabilization fund over the last three years. Um, even though we had a kind of a low year in terms of water revenue last year, I don't think that's going to recur this year. I think we're going to sell enough water to, to basically cover the budget. Um, so I'm recommending basically keep the rates the same this year. We'll obviously take a look at the, the finance director in, usually by early September, she has the uh, retained earnings number for what, what is this fiscal year will be closing out. So we'll take a hard look at that and just make sure that we're on track to do that. And then um, it obviously monitor the budget as we go through the year. And just real, real quick on the capital. Um, I had mentioned uh, Mount Vernon Street. So we approved last Monday night again, we approved $1.1 million for water main replacement and rehab. and that. Uh, that's the only thing we're looking to bond this year. That includes the replacement of a section of six-inch water main in Mount Vernon Street. I think a lot of you have heard Mount Vernon Street is not in the greatest uh, condition. So what we're trying to do is get in there, get that water main replaced, and then go in and uh, move forward with the road work that needs to be done. And this would also support some of the ancillary work we do in support of the town road program, uh, the replacement of the old services, replacement of fire hydrants, addition of new valves as needed. Mr. Mark, if I know the residents have a lot of questions about Mount Vernon, when do you suspect that water main replacement will take place, like time-wise? So it's probably going to take place if it gets started late this year. It's not going to get completed this year, so it's probably going to be into next construction, next year's construction season before that gets replaced. But it will be done. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. O'Leary? Just in relation to. Uh, the other money that's been appropriated for other capital improvements in relation to Andover, water improvements, I mean, we appropriated $3 million plus an additional $3 million, $6 million basically. Um, and we haven't expended anything yet. We're not factoring in the timeline, or are we factoring in the timeline in relation to the chlorination plant, the work on Upper Main Street to North Street yet? So they're not really hitting the books next fiscal year. If, if anything, there may be some very small numbers of uh, the bands, the band bond anticipation notes. Yeah, I just, my, my concern is, is, you know, as we spend it, we'll spend it hopefully quickly, you know. Um, I don't want to see a, and I, I know we have $2.5 million here in reserves, but I also don't want to cut us short. You know, should we be anticipating those expenditures and budgeting it appropriately so that our reserves are actually a little more healthy to help stabilize rates? Or do you think we're still going to be in a position rather than, you know, two years from now looking at a significant increase because of what we're spending, because of the debt service we're going to be taking on? I, I'm just looking to, to balance it so that it's, you know, if we had to go, you know, 1% or 2% this year to avoid a 4% two years from now. Mrs. What can we anticipate? Mrs. Herbert had her hand up too. Did you want to make a comment? Yeah, but I'm here only Mr. O'Leary to be allowed to finish his. 
Oh, I thought he was. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's all right. I no, thought no, no. You had finished no, no. So, so my, my, my concern is, is that we're going to be spending a significant amount of money shortly in relation to the chlorination plant and main capital improvements on Upper Main Street, Northern Main Street, between the Andover Line and North Street shortly. And with that comes the debt service, which we're going to have to budget for. So I, again, recognizing we have a pretty good size, sizable stabilization fund, is it enough to stabilize the rate so that three years from now, we're not going to be facing an abnormal increase? And I, and I recognize that you know, we're getting credits from Andover for the next 10 years of $95,000, and you know, we got a good deal. You know, that's great. Uh, so, so one of the things you will notice, and, and I know it's hard to pick up because with the information I gave you showed it level funded, but the debt service, the amount we're paying for debt service has dropped by about 104000 from last year to this year. That's the tendency in our debt service. So typically, until you're taking on new projects, <coughs> you're paying off old projects, that, that debt tends to drop year to year. Right. <clears throat> so it's something that we're going to keep a close look on and just make sure that yeah, I just don't want to be sitting here two, <coughs> two years from now. I think two years I'll still be sitting here. Um, you know, saying, you know, where did this come from? <coughs> when we can reasonably anticipate we're going to be <coughs> expending these funds. No, know. that's a, it's an excellent question. Um, yeah. it, it's one I wrestled <coughs> with. It's one that we, we discussed in the, with the Water Commission as well. Is right. do you do that? There was a zero percent change from FY18 to FY19. Now you're going a second year with a 0% increase. And on the other hand, you have to balance. And we know two years from now that we are going to be taking on more debt. <coughs> Absolutely. And three years from now, additional debt. Because again, these projects are going to come rather quickly. And you can anticipate up to $6 million hitting the books shortly. So should we anticipate that by budgeting for it so that we don't get a, a sharp increase as opposed to? Again, that, that's something we wrestled with. One of the things we did as we were looking to go to the MWRA, we did those big 8%, 6%, 6% right. yep. in the anticipation of that huge capital that we now have, most of it we've avoided by not, uh, not going the MWRA route. So it, it's something we need, and again, it's something I struggled with. It's mm -hmm. Do you come a second year in a row and recommend a 0% increase? And I just felt that we've added so much money into those stabilization funds over the last couple of years that... Yeah, I just, just I, again, I, I, I don't know what the debt service is going to look like, and maybe Mr. Gilberto does. You know, if we take on, you know, $3 million in one year and then another 1.5 and then another 1.5 over a three-year period, you know, what is it going to look like and how much can the stabilization fund absorb that before we have to hit the ratepayers with a significant increase, as opposed to gradually. And again, it, it was certainly going to be far more substantial going to MWRA, and we anticipated that, and we told town meeting that, and they bought into it. Um, far less with the deal with Andover, but we still have some infrastructure improvements that have to be made that we're going to have to borrow for. And I just don't want to have a, you know, a spike in two years unnecessarily when we can gradually, gradually ease ourselves into it and keep it more stable for five years. But. No, I'm just gonna Are you all set, Mr. I Chairman? am, thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Harrell, um, Actually, uh, a follow-up to what Steve's been saying, as you know, there were a number of years when we ignored the water rates and we didn't have any Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it also should be remembered that we review the water rate rates every year. So I agree with what you're what you're suggesting, but I also think that we have another year um, that we can also revisit this next year. But my question to you, Mark, is a pretty straightforward question. You may have covered it, but when capital um, authorized the um, Money for the new meters. A part of the a part of the idea was that we would capture more water, and that as a result, 
So now I understand that the water we sell is very much, or, or don't sell, is very much weather related, but is there any way you can break out um, how much these new water meters are, are capturing that we were losing before? And I, my guess is you probably can't easily. It's a very difficult thing, and I think if I look back, I think the, uh, the engineer that we had who made that statement said it would probably be about a quarter of a million dollars per year. Um, right. You know, if you look at that, just the first quarter last year, we were up by uh, $130,000. Uh, and then we dropped way down because the second quarter was low. Again, we captured some more in the third quarter. Uh, it, it's very hard to look year to okay. year and say no, exactly. that's right. I figured as much, but I wanted to I, You know, I did spend some time. I looked through about 200 accounts because people were complaining that their bills were going up. And I really couldn't see any trend in that, that replacing the meters, there was no, nothing that jumped out huge in the, uh, in the water bills. Thank you. Do members have any other questions? Mr. Gilberto. Maybe in, in an attempt to answer Mr. O'Leary's um, concern. So I, I support the water superintendent's uh, recommendation. Um, and, and the reason I support it, uh, the reasons I support it are, are threefold. First, um, we do have uh, on the horizon a significant state grant to offset that $6 million cost, and we believe it'll be to the tune of $3 million. So. That, that will help ease the debt service uh, obligations uh, over the long term. Second, uh, at least for fiscal year 2018, we did have a significant um, residual amount in the debt service allocation. We had $758,000 budgeted, and we spent $390,000 of it. So we seem to have a little bit of, we had wiggle room in fiscal year 18, and we have projects that have continued to come off. And the third relates to what Ms. Herbert indicated, which is, uh, we are most definitely in this period of time where there's a lot of uh, fluctuation that's going to happen as we get more and more meters, uh, more and more of the new meters online. Um, yeah, you know, I certainly, I would be foolish to sit here and tell you, no, there's no, 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 no risk of that happening. It certainly could happen, but I also think that having done those multiple years of the significant increases, building up the reserves, and, and knowing that we are likely to be billing for more gallons of water than we would year to year, all things being equal, um, from, from my standpoint, I, I think that that's something we expected to happen. So I'm comfortable with this, you know, with the understanding that those are the factors that are contributing to it. You know, we could have a year's worth of data with that high percentage, I think it's 97.5% of the meters being replaced, that lead us to be, you know, we may, may be looking back and saying we didn't bill for as much water as we thought, but it seems like it, that it's trending in the way we expected it to. Um, which is the reason that I, I support the recommendation. But th there is a risk. I mean, it cl clearly is as we look at debt service. Um, there could be something unanticipated relative to our wells that could also complicate things, although I think the infrastructure stabilization fund would be a, a place, we, water infrastructure stabilization fund would be a place we could go to. So I, I think we're going to have to continue to monitor it as we look over the course of the next fiscal year uh, or even sooner for that matter. Um, you know, we do have the opportunity to adjust the rates sooner um, if the trends are not in our, in our favor. Um, I, I know that's not desirable, but it is an option that's always available to us. So it, it's the honest answer, Mr. O'Leary. It's no, no, not a great answer, it. but... Um, yeah. No, it's a great answer. I thought it was a great answer. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clark? I, I would just echo that. And the one thing I would say in, in the Water Commission, Andrew asked this question tonight, what are the plans for that reserve fund? There's two and a half million dollars sitting there. And, you know, if we see that next year is going to be a 6% increase in the water rates, we can look to that water uh, reserve fund to offset the need for a rate increase so we don't have a, that sharp increase. We don't really have a defined plan what we're going to do with that money at this point. And that, that's one of the things I wrestle with. You know, how, how much do you keep adding to that without telling people what you're going to do with that? What's the eventual plan for that? So we do have, we're in a much better position, and I agree with Abby, a couple years ago, 10 years ago, if it might have been when we got into trouble with DOR, we didn't take a serious enough look at the rates every year. And now we have the option to come back in September, see if we actually do generate retained earnings in this current fiscal year. We have the opportunity, there's nothing that says we have to wait till June 17th to set the water rates, or that we can't bump them in the middle of the year if we feel the revenues aren't there or that there's some un unanticipated uh, expenses coming down the road. So the message to the ratepayers is, you know, we're trying to work, you know, reasonably and make responsible assumptions and try to ease the, the burden on the ratepayer um, to the extent possible, but understand that we are in this period of transition and um, that, you know, we're going to need to continue to monitor the performance of the enterprise overall. Okay. 
Thank you. Any other questions? Do I have a motion? I move to retain the current water use rates and fee schedule. Second. Motion and a second to all those in favor. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thanks, Mark. So our next order of business is uh, year-end transfers, which we have none. Sorry. I'm pleased we to report at this time, at least. So our next order of business then will be go on to number ten. <coughs> Common Victualler Automatic Amusement Device License, New England Authentic Eats LLC DBA Puppuccinos. It's a license application found Madam on page sixty-one. Madam Chair, do we wish? Through you, do we wish to entertain the uh, facilities master plan only because I know um, the chair of that committee is present with us this evening? Possible. How long? Let's this is going to take two, 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 two seconds. Yeah. Common victuals. I defer it. <laughs> it's straightforward. I think we all know the story with regard to, to Papaginos. They've gone through a bankruptcy filing. We're advised that they continue uh, to plan to operate their business here in North Reading. We're certainly pleased to hear that. Um, they are reorganizing um, their assets and they are asking for a license to be issued in a new name. And we're recommending the license. And do we have a, re a representative in the audience? Did you want to just give us your name and tell sure. us what your <coughs> affiliation with? With yeah, the businesses. I'm, my name is John Campbell. I'm an area manager for Papa Junos. Okay. Right, so does anyone have any questions for Mr. Gamble? Do I have a motion? I uh, move to approve the common victual license for New England Authentic Eats LLC DBA Papa Junos, to expire December 31st, 2019, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next order of business is common victuals license for Nan Center Cafe. Do we Madam have a Chair, Madam Chair, there, there is an automatic amusement license, I believe, as well. Oh, okay. uh, to the Second clerk, license. it may be it may be attached to the license or right behind it. So am I reading that? It's for that one vending machine Correct. that the your, machine. our the children cool. always ask for the money. <laughs> to, you know, go ahead. Do I have a motion? I uh, move to approve the automatic amusement device license for New England Authentic Eats, LLC, DBA, Papagino. Second. second. Motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Next order of business. <laughs> Nance Cafe, we have a representative. Would you identify yourself for the record? Hi, my name is Aldo. Um, I live in Danvers, Father of Two, and I'm trying to um, purchase the asset at Nance Cafe with my wife. Okay. <clears throat> Madam Chair, through you. Mr. Gilberto. Okay, so my, my understanding is the current owners are looking to focus on another business that they have uh, in Salem, correct. I believe. Salem. And you are a cousin of the current? Correct. Is that my correct? My mom and their mom are sisters. So I basically, see. that's my aunt and my first cousin. And you intend to operate the business under the same name? Yes, sir. And, yes. and do you already work there? Uh, right now, no. Okay. I just go in and now just to help them out a little bit. Thank you. Would you guys be changing your hours at all? No, six to two, seven days. Same as they had. Same name, Nance Cafe. Same, st same staff? You keeping the staff? Except him. Except him. Except <laughs> he's gone. He's out. <laughs> I'm Thank you very much. Any other questions? No. All set. Do I have a motion? Move to approve the common victual license for Christian Incorporated DBA Nance Cafe to expire December 31st. Second. Motion. A second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Good luck. Much, much success. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great night, guys. Thank you. you, you too. Too. Thanks for sticking with us. <laughs> That's a first. Yeah. <laughs> Next order of business is a policy for the um, the chapter forty, section thirteen E school district reserve fund transfers. Madam Chair, do we want to accommodate uh, facilities master plan scope? Well, we're doing our, let's just go to page 69 and read this 
one sentence policy for the benefit of the finance chair. Oh, that's right. Too. Present with us that's today. That's right. Too. Page 69. So yeah, we all know this, the genesis of this is the special uh, uh, district reserve fund for emergency, unplanned, unbudgeted special education funds. And we, um, we've got the finance committee's approval, but we want the finance committee's review um, and uh, Recommend. I guess yeah. input input on any of these is this this particular fund it's a specific fund that both the school committee and the select board have to vote to approve expenditures from so the again the policy is on page 69 did you want to read uh, I'm happy to read it read? it just reflects the conversations at the financial planning team and it reads Prior to considering any request for a transfer of funds from the school district reserve fund established by the June 10th, 2019 town meeting, the select board shall request and consider a recommendation from the finance committee. Anybody have any questions? Anybody want to make that policy longer with more wording? Or, and, no. Uh, is that sufficient? Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Less and is best. Um, Mr. Gilberto, it's a policy f just in terms of do we have to vote on that? There is a motion to All approve right. the first reading and then there'll yep. be a, mo a motion submitted on July 15th for a second, second and final reading. Okay. So do I have a motion? I move to approve the first reading of the school district reserve fund transfer policy pursuant to chapter 40. Second. second. Motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Do we want <laughs> let's skip let's skip over to item number 14 which is a review to review the facilities master plan scope it can be found on page 76 of your share file and we have the finance chair here mr. Gilberto sure Th thank you um, madam chair the two-page uh, scope that you're looking at in the packet here page 76 and 77 of the meeting packet is uh, part of a larger procurement package that we'll be issuing in the, in the coming weeks um, for um, proposals to provide master planning uh, services for our facility master plan. Um, the way we've structured this, uh, there would be a sort of a, a core project of establishing a facilities master plan, um, which would include collecting and analyzing current and, and anticipated programmatic needs of the departments of the town and the potential space needs for community groups within the public facilities, creating general assessments of the facilities, and I'm summarizing here, including the condition of their structural, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. Um, that's with a goal of trying to nail down the remaining useful life of the facilities and those systems. Um, studying design options for town held properties, evaluating project costs, including renovation of existing facilities and construction of proposed future buildings, establishing a priority and schedule for future capital projects related to the municipal facilities. So this was based upon the facilities master plan that uh, process that was followed in the town of Wilmington. Um, if, for those of you who haven't had a chance, their municipal website has a really detailed listing of the plan, including the priorities and the funding for the plan. Um, Ms. Herbert, who is the uh, finance committee chair, but also the chair of the facilities master plan committee, has met with, um, along with uh, Don Kelleher, the folks in uh, Wilmington, and got some great feedback. Um, this master plan, the, the funding for it was approved in October of, I believe, 2017, um, due to turnover in the position of director of public works. It's been delayed, but we're pleased to be looking to get it off the ground. In terms of the facilities to be considered, the ones that are enumerated are the town hall, the public safety building, the Flint Memorial Library, Damon Tavern, the third meeting house or building on the common, the DPW facility, uh, or garage as it's called, um, our water treatment facilities, the Hillview Country Club function facility, Parks and Recreation Center, and the Parks and Recreation uh, Maintenance or Wheel or Barn. And uh, we have a narrative in there that sort of describes some of the discussions that have taken place to date relative to the facilities. The most recent um, is obviously the uh, fire department and the evaluation we did for moving the fire department and some offices from the town hall over to 217 Main Street. Obviously that did not materialize, uh, but we've referenced the fire department need here as well as 
the intergenerational center, which this board discussed um, last July with Representative Jones. So for those who don't know, Representative Jones has identified and obtained a, an, a, a bond bill earmark uh, for $10 million, which we are hopeful to be able to uh, secure in the next few years. Um, so the thinking is that that's sort of the first thing that would um, advance in the dominoes, if you will, that intergenerational center, which would accommodate parks and recreation, elder affairs, veteran services, and youth services. Um, it, it ties back to the existing uh, maintenance facility, which is the so-called barn there. Um, we have an, an another funding source of uh, $500,000 that Representative Jones has identified. It's also in a bond bill that we think will be available sooner than the $10 million, and we hope that it will be. And the thinking that the, the working thinking is that we would use that to effectively demolish the Wheeler Barn and replace it with a smaller maintenance facility to the rear of that lot at 5 Central Street. So um, the, the core is the, the, the facility's master plan. Then you have this kind of secondary project of advancing the design work for the intergenerational facility and the fire station. And then there's uh, what I'll call a tertiary, tertiary um, project of looking at the condition of uh, the two um, elementary schools that were uh, not as recently renovated, uh, and but then also looking at the long-term needs for the, the Batchelder Elementary School and the Middle High School. So that's the third phase. And we've structured it so that um, we can sort of, I don't want to say pick and choose, but if we don't have enough funding to get to the, to the second and third, or the third and fourth areas, um, we would still be able to award a contract for the first one or two areas. And I, I should note that this, uh, this scope was reviewed with the uh, Facilities Master Plan Committee at a meeting about two weeks ago, I think, at this point in time, and uh, they did, uh, uh, did support it, or those who were able to attend uh, did support it. Um, we told them we would like to bring it to the select board for your, um, for your feedback. Um, I think the committee, and, and I know myself and the public, uh, Department of Public Works, the director's not here this evening, but they are sort of administratively supporting the work of the committee. Um, we want to make sure that we're sort of off on, off on the right path before we get too far down the, the road, so to speak. Um, so that's the presentation. Through you, Madam Chair, I'll just ask if Ms. Herbert has anything she'd like to add relative to this. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz. As someone who served with Abby on the committee, um, I think it's important for the town to have an idea of what we have as far as big repairs coming in down the pike for the next 10, 20 years or so, um, so we can financially plan for it. Right now, we're kind of at times dealing with things as they come up, and I think it's important that for the Capital Improvement Committee, especially, to be able to have a, a guide to see hey, you got 10 years left in this building, and the roof's going to be five years here. So we can, you know, it'll affect what we bond in a particular year as far as capital projects. So it's a good thing to have. This is her. This is, a, this is a, the, the point of this um, consultant and his work is not to decide when we're going to need to put a new roof on whatever. The, the point of it, as I see it at least, is to understand what the needs of the community are over the next 20 plus years, all right, the, all right, and look at what we have now, what works, what doesn't, what should be replaced, and, and how, what changes need to be made, and that's basically it. I, I seriously recommend that you read the Wilmington, Town of Wilmington's um, uh, plan. It's on their website. It's very well done. It was done by the consultant because I read it and I went, oh, seriously? I don't think so. Uh, but the, the consultant whom they had was very good at working with them uh, and there were uh, portions of the job, for lack of a better term, that were driven by the consultant and there were parts that the committee did. There was a lot of community reach, outreach, and things like that that was basically handled by the committee. The consultant was at every single meeting that they had in reviewing the minutes of that committee, the only committee, the only minutes that were like three lines long instead of a page were, were the minutes of the meeting that the consultant didn't come. Uh, so he was extraordinarily um, helpful, you know, talked to, you know, f discovered use, measured buildings, did this, did that. In the RFQ, we also ask that they look at 
any town owned uh, property that wasn't, uh, it's not a swamp and is greater than two acres. Um, so we know what kinds of things we, we can think about. And, and none of this suggests that uh, town hall's gonna stay here, and the fire department's gonna stay there, and this school's gonna stay there. It's all basically very fluid in looking at what we have and what we need, and how we best meet our needs going forward over the next 20 years. Does that sound accurate? I, I believe so, although I would note that you know, we have taken some liberty with making the consultant aware of the previous discussion relative to the intergenerational center. And uh, you know, the recreation, Parks and Recreation Committee was here before the board, although I understand two members were not here for it. And they, they have, um, I guess, uh, begun zeroing in on a location at the existing Ipswich River Park uh, facility as, as uh, their spot. It doesn't foreclose other options, but we, we were, I tried to, we tried to put into the scope facts. There has been a discussion about this. This has been a location that was identified. It doesn't mean that it's the only location. Mr. Walner? Uh, on that topic, there are some site locations that, you know, we're looking at potential changing. And on that particular parks and rec recommendation, I also know Elder Services, which would be a big part of that, would actually like to see it be in the new downtown area. So I think that's very much in the, in a, um, Maybe that's not what the board heard, but I know that's a discussion topic, is that it doesn't necessarily belong there and that the... We have to define where downtown is, and I don't think that's clear, but I do think that there is a suggestion, uh, or certainly the building on the common is there, we can look at and see if it works. Um, I believe that the, uh, Mr. Gilberto, wasn't the idea to have uh, senior services at the intergenerational center, which would free up building on the common for some other um, aspects, maybe even town offices, who knows? Yes. So I think it's, it's somewhat fluid, and I think the reason for hiring a consultant is, first of all, I don't want to go over here with my measuring tape, and hopefully they have some, some good ideas with community and committee input. Through you, Madam Chair, I, I think the, the, the so you, you are correct, we would, the, the, the working theory, I, I think, from the work that the Parks and Recreation Committee has done with Elder Affairs is that they would be co-located. I think Mr. Walner's concern is, you know, is that co-located facility at 5 Central Street or is it somewhere else that's more centrally located? I think that's, that's your correct. concern. Yeah, and Elder yeah. Services, I know, would like to have it in a different location. Right. At least that's the last time I talked to him. <laughs> I think the plan is going to give us some ideas on what we're doing. It would do. hope so. Yeah, that's the whole object of it. This reminds me of the bathrooms at the uh, field. Oh, don't remind me. Uh, yeah. The world's most expensive thrones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we don't need a motion on this. We're nope. just, just we're looking just for feedback. And I, I think we. Does anyone have any more input on that? Or any more feedback that you want to? Just a, a quick question. So this is just to look at, again, um, property that the town currently owns in addition to facilities and nothing outside of that? There's no reason why we can't ask them to look at something else. Why well, we can't what? There's no reason why they can't be asked to. This is the RFQ. This is the base. Yeah. They're going to isolate parcels that we own that could support no, I, I understand that, but I'm, I'm talking. I'm, I'm talking about looking at other locations, which maybe the town should purchase and sell off other town-owned land in order to facilitate right. what well, we're looking to do. That's not not unheard of. No. Oh. So how do we incorporate that? Well, I think that we're going to sit down. The the committee will sit down with um, the uh, people that uh, bid uh, for this job for this consulting job and talk to them and I think that probably I have to check with Mr. Gilberto but at some point if it seems that that should be added um, it could be added. It did uh, to me if we talked about the Heffern property tonight talking about stop and shop locations and again we have ample title land that we could sell off in order to help finance 
these other uh, ventures, if that's the direction we should head in, if we're talking about where's our downtown going to be, you know. I think that's a huge question. Right. So I, I think in order to help answer that question, we need to also look at other opportunities and expenditures to facilitate that of those ideas. <coughs> so just, just because now I just want to be clear. So Mr. Walner, you, you suggested, and I know we worked on, we, we were told this was all these stakeholders work together on the facility at Ipswich River Park, including youth services, an intergenerational facility, community center type of a facility, all in that one area, proposed location being Ipswich River Park. We, we've talked about that multiple times, but now you're saying Elder Services didn't participate or isn't on board with that and wants to be located. Madam Chair, um, I just want to. No, I have a conflict on this discussion, though. I just oh, want to say I'm sorry. I okay. live at. A question. No, but I live oh, at 4 okay. Central Street. I'm not comfortable oh. discussing the 5 Central Street property. I think I have a conflict on that okay. issue. So that's if that's the, what we're going to discuss, I think I need to recuse myself. Okay. So, if you're so just asking about, so I'll sit through the one question. Right, because I thought Elder Services was part of that participating, uh, participant in that discussion about, uh, you know, even just a design or what the need was, space need and everything else like that was. So, But now we heard something different today, and then you're mentioning that w we didn't hear about what was presented by CPC as part of anything related to elder services though is that what you're so you are wanting to incorporate into this i guess it's mr o'lear that i'd be asking okay. and then mr Waller, trying, no, to, trying to i'm trying to i'm trying I'm to, to, I'm to, 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 trying to get mean, his handle on all yeah, yeah i mean it's, it's there's very no, confusing th no there's now. no doubt that elder services would like to be included within an intergenerational center right. wherever it's located you know, wherever it's deemed to be located it's but a, this it's study it's would be to study that but what i'm saying is central street right I think that's something that having it at Ipswich River Park had been discussed for quite a while. In, in, in many ways, it makes sense. Route 28 is not exactly a country lane. If you're going to have youth and recreation services and elderly and everything else, it might make more sense to have it at Ipswich River Park. But I don't think anybody's made that decision, and I think that that's a, the only thing that we've told the included in the RFQ is the idea that that, 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 that that center is kind of, don't tell us we should go get a center like that because we've already determined that. Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah, and I guess Mr. your question <laughs> to me maybe and <laughs> is, you know, should we be, since we're going to be hiring a consultant, be looking at other opportunities to explore as we're looking at this, rather than you know, pigeonholing ourselves to an idea that people presented in the past because it's something we already own. What I'm saying is, you know, we have this parcel. If we're gonna to move town hall somewhere, we've got nine acres here. We can bulldoze and sell that's less than a mile from Route 93. You know, there's a value here to this, which would help offset the cost of moving. Those are the types of things that we need to have included in a facilities master plan committee and 20 years from now what should we be doing and I'm sure it's going to be included what I don't want to exclude is opportunities uh, that Mr. Heffern may be presenting to us and potentially any opportunities we have with a, a parcel such as a stop and shop that's that's it you know there's no doubt senior you know elder services want to be included in an intergenerational center that's cool. that makes the yeah, utmost sense along with Again, veteran services and services. whatever, yeah. you know, in parks and recreation. That's fine. But we really need to, if we're going to be spending the money and we're going to be hiring a consultant, look at potential opportunities that may be in front of us. And again, facilitate the discussions with the property owners to help us come to some reasonable conclusions as to what we can, can't, or should or shouldn't be doing. And I just don't want that excluded. Um, Mr. Gilbert. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I think if we have specific locations that we would want to uh, to have uh, be in play, 
in addition to the town owned land that's over two acres that we're going to provide the unrestricted town owned land I, I think we could easily add those two parcels to the scope of, of the study um, if that's the desire uh, for, for uh, if, if we desire to understand an alternative that looked at that uh, I mean to me if we know specific parcels I, I think it's probably pretty straightforward to simply ask those that two probably parcels. That what, what we know is in play and one potentially in play within before 2026 you know and the other thing is, is you know as far as you know the Central Street location you know that's under the enterprise of the Hillview Commission they need to be included in the discussion and in the decision-making process Ipswich River Park is under the auspices of the Hillview Commission and the enterprise it's been managed by Parks and Recreation through an agreement with the enterprise so we just make need to make sure that the Hillview is included in this too that's a good idea. Thank you. I, I don't think we want to lose sight of the fact that I think that one of the main purposes of this, and Abby, if I'm wrong, is to analyze this, the buildings that we own now. And you know, I do disagree with you a little bit. I think it is also what's the life of these buildings? You know, when are we going to have to replace them? That kind of stuff. So I, I think that's the main purpose of this is looking at what we have now and getting an idea of is this something we should look towards keeping or replacing? <laughs> that, that was my take. I, I, I think you're right. Yeah. And look at what the town's needs are going forward. Right. Okay. So you can include those two parcels, those additional parcels. If there is an objection, yeah. I think it's a matter of adding the two. I mean, I can't see the facilities master plan committee objecting to those two parcels being in play, but. What two parcels? If I understand it correctly, 66 Winter well, Street. Why would we want to take the stop and shop parcel off our commercial so tax? This is, this is kind of why I'm asking the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes official, we, we don't own that parcel. I know. Why would it we? It makes no sense that we would incorporate it in when it, it deviates from the purpose of this to begin with. I, it doesn't make any sense. This so is about town owned. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it just, what's the second parcel? 66 and what was the second one you talked what's the other one stop, stop and shop if I understood mr. O'Leary correctly right it's really part it's part of the um, having a, a successful development successful town center is to have a there there and a there there oftentimes is a civic some sort of civic um, uh, collection place it could be town hall could be um, the intergenerational community center um, I was just down in Florida seeing my daughter and right there I can show you a picture on my phone I look around the square and there's town hall right off there because the reason why you do that sort of thing is to bring people downtown and to keep a, a regular um, buzz of traffic and pedestrians walking around doing things like that I'm not saying that's what should happen but I think the point is is that you want to assess you know is this is this the best place to put town hall is this is there a better place to put town hall how much would it cost us to rebuild it somewhere else? Same as the fire station. Uh, you know, he gave us an assessment when Lee and Ann were there. How much would it cost to do another one? Is that good where it is? Should that be going on Main Street? Are there strategic reasons for the doing that? Is it a reason for saving life, reducing? I mean, you got to know the numbers. you got to know your current facilities. And then you're playing a game of chess. And the game of chess is, I'm looking at all this and moving around and sitting down and trying to be rational to figure out a weighted decision what makes the most sense for the town. But without that information, we'll be stuck. So that information somehow has to be produced um, so that we have that information in front of us so that at some point we can play the game of chess and reallocate where things need to go if they need to be moved around. That's, that's the goal. And, and again, it, is uh, Ipswich River Park a better location for a central fire station as opposed to having you know, a west side fire station or as we talked about just several months ago, you know, potentially shutting down the one in the, the old center of town and putting it out here on Main Street that we talked about. You know, are the people on the easterly side of town going to be comfortable with, you know, one centralized location, or are we going to go with two, which means additional staffing and all the rest of the other costs go along with it? So, I mean, all of this comes into play. Our fire station, you know, is not adequate. You know, our staffing levels are probably not adequate. You know. Should we have a West Side station? No. Should we be able to respond uh, to the entire community better? Yes. So what's the best way to do it? And what is the most palatable way for the community to accept it? You know, and it may be that we need to purchase some other property and sell off some of the land we have. 
make it work. I mean, we're talking about, you know, decisions that are going to affect this community for the next 50 years. You know, you have to think a little bit outside the box. Uh, we, we did it with the Andover deal with water. I mean, we went with a 99-year deal. You know, that was unheard of. Took special legislation, the whole thing. That's what we need to do here. You know, instead of just, you know, what do we have? What do we have to work with? You know, what can we do to make it work well and in the best interest of the community for the generations to come? And to me, don't exclude other opportunities. You know, as far as taking stop and shop off the tax rolls, they're not generating much income here and haven't for the last eight or ten years. Because there's no sewer, Steve. Unless no, you not take because there's no stop. Forget that, no that, sewers. Right, it was a stop and shop right. there before. You know, it's vacant. It's vacant. You know, so what good is it doing us now? I'd rather take that off the tax roll and put this on the tax rolls that's one mile from Route 93 if we can do it. Sewerage, again, I'm the biggest advocate for it. You know, but I'm being, I'm being realistic about it too. You know, we're 10, 15 years down that's the road. That's not what you've said in the past. No. Why is it different it's tonight? It's not different. No, no, no. It's it's why? Be, no. Listen, Wait. I'm hoping we're moving this thing forward as quickly as we can. Yeah. You know, but, you know, you're talking about. $25, $30 $30 million worth of investment in Andover before we can even get it here. Right. You know, and then you've got to move it down 28. You know, so this is going to take a lot of money and time and by getting the public to buy into it. And along with that comes, you know, some interim measures that we need to consider. And that comes along with when we talked about the Heffern property, the CPC a little bit earlier. You know, if we have to build a package treatment plant that's going to last us 15 or 20 years, what's wrong with that? It's a huge investment, which is going to jumpstart the economic development on Route 28. If we do it by purchasing some of the property there and do that, because it's going to take this community to make these types of investments to make it happen. And so let's utilize the assets we have, shift them around, as Mr. Waller says, it, and play the chess game here. But we need to look at it, and we're going to be paying a consultant to do something for us let them take a look at it. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Mr. Schultz. All right. So far tonight, I've heard <coughs> we're going to spend a million dollars on a packaging plant. We could buy Heffron for $2 million. Now we're going to buy Stop and Shop, eight, ten million. $10 Okay, we haven't even built, put a stick in the ground, built anything yet. So we've already spent the Pulte money more than we have now just on these two properties. The biggest problem we have in this town is the lack of sewage. All these things are great. We all want an intergenerational center. We all want a senior center. We all want housing. We all want a new town hall. But until you build the commercial tax base by having bigger things built, vis-a-vis -vis have a wastewater solution, you're just spinning your wheels. What I'm hearing tonight is that all this pulting money is going to be spent on one-off projects. To me, that's fiscally irresponsible to the voters. All this land that we have that you're talking about selling, what do we have that that, that value is going to come up with $20 million? I just, the math doesn't work here. I, in, in this committee that I'm on, as far as the master plan committee, it's to look at town-held properties and look at town-owned land. It's not to look at something that we don't even know is for sale. I mean, do we want to isolate every commercial property on 20? Hey, we should buy this. We should buy that. So you're going to put a packing plan up by Stop and Shop? What about all the business owners up by Dairy Queen or the business owners down the other way? You're not helping them. What does that say to them? Your area of town doesn't matter? I mean, we're getting way over it. We have to increase the tax base so we can do all these projects that you want to, you guys want to do, but you can't just spend, we have one chance to spend that Pulte money. You guys have already spent it tonight. I think it's irresponsible, and I think we have to slow down, find out what we have, what we need, have this plan go through, not be analyzing properties that we don't own. I mean, I, I don't know where you stop when you start that going on that hole. It's just, just, uh, just comment. It's just to get information on the table so you have the information. And nobody's talking about spending the Pulte. So this is just to get the information on the table so we have enough information so we can make good decisions strategically going forward. And it may work out at the end of the day. Maybe right, it doesn't work, it doesn't happen, but at least we have the information. That's really just the main point. We're just trying to make the information be complete so that you could answer these kind of questions. So you know you how many studies, studies we have in uh, town hall? Mr. Schultz, Mr. Schultz. I mean, First of all, we haven't heard from Mrs. Gonzalez <laughs> at all. Yes. So I'm just let's, taking it all in. I know, <laughs> but we need to give her an opportunity to speak to and just from my perspective, too, we're getting something that isn't even, they've asked to study it. Right. So why would we incorporate it into this? That was the whole point. Yes, go ahead, do it, go ahead. This is something totally different. Yeah, so why, 
are we blending these two together? Let them come back like they said they were. They're working on a specific timeline for that one particular thing, but they're considering something totally different than what this study is to, to be considering or what this request is. And I wouldn't blend it. We don't even know what that's going to look like until it comes back to us with a little bit more detail fleshed out. And it was for a different, it's for sewer treatment and a potential shared ownership type of a project from what I read. How does so. that not fit? How does that not fit into a long-term master plan for public facilities? Because we don't know don't what it is property. yet. How do you fit a puzzle piece when you don't know the shape of the yeah. puzzle piece? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense until you get the details. So why are we lopping that on to this particular review? Because we want it to be a valuable piece of information and a tool for us to move forward. Why would we ignore a couple of opportunities? We're not ignoring it. The, Warren's it? crew is investigating it. But it, it should be blended with this whole other report. Steve, Steve, we're gonna, there's no reason why we can't say well, these properties also would be cost a lot. That's not what I'm hearing from my colleagues here. That's not well, what I'm hearing from my colleagues. Well, there's a committee of however many animals. I, I'm just telling you, that's not what I'm hearing from my colleagues. Well, you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> this also pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the time any of this happens, you and I will be at Riverside. Mm -hmm. Me first. Oh, I did invest in some real estate there this past year. Oh, oh my <laughs> word. Oh, my but goodness. No, I, mean, I think everybody... More real estate in North This just took a bad turn. <laughs> I know. I know. Everybody was... So already was a little out of I, water. Yeah. But, you know, healthy debate is good. ...to build off of, because none of these things are ever cast in stone. They're organic. They're like a Walt Whitman poem. All right, but everybody wants a solid base, all right, from which we can go forward and build and improve the facilities and help the town. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's going to mean, you know, you're going to have town hall at Stop and Shop or you're going to have whatever, but this consultant will give us the initial groundwork and we can ask him or we can throw in, hey, while you're driving up and down 28, here are two properties that are possibilities. Okay? What do you think about those in the equation? I like what I'm hearing from you. Thank you. But Hey, yeah. but you know what? There's a couple more properties Steve, I'll give you to throw to me, in okay? there. Yeah, I'll give you a couple properties too. Why are we just taking care of Mr. Heffron's property? Oh. It, it doesn't, why not the guy down the street? I don't understand why we're picking properties out. It doesn't, Stop and Shop's not even for sale. Should, and we're real good negotiators if we're saying we want to buy something and really want it really bad and haven't even talked to them about a price. I mean, you just raised the price of a million dollars on that property tonight by saying what you've said. Yeah. I don't understand the lot. We gotta, we're going way ahead of ourselves here. Okay. All right. I'm going home. Um, okay. <laughs> Kisses. <laughs> Mr. Um, Gilberto. What are you looking so we, for? We for were, we were reviewing for it for scope, and I think we, we've heard two different, differing opinions. It, it looked nice when we read it in the packet, but there's clearly a divergence of opinion that it should be, the scope should be a last to size. But you haven't seen the outcome of what this RFQ did, and I think that that's, I'm sorry, forgive me, um, Mr. Karen, the administrator. Um, but I think that if you have problems with the RFQ, which I think by definition should be open-ended with, with some you know, specific responsibilities, <coughs> then go read what that RFQ ultimately generated. Uh, because one of the biggest t fights in Wilmington was where to put the library. When you say read, that's yeah. the one you're talking about, not the this one. This is the that's Wilmington one, right? You said. Yes, it's the Wilmington plan. 257 pages long, so it's very. No, but you can eliminate because an awful lot of it was about redoing all their schools. No, I'm saying it's stuff. very detailed. That's why I bring it up. But, but you can you can you no. can you can skim, you know, it's maybe 25 pages. But I think it's really worth reading because that gives you the progression. You got the RFQ. You can also go in and read the minutes, but. And then you can go to the final end product, which was done in 2018. 
All right. And that will show you, um, you know, what ultimately came out of it. All right. Because I don't think it's necessary. I think it was a good product. Okay. Just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we are what are we going to do with the scope my friends are we going to let Abby I, I don't I mean we were just reviewing it uh, do we want to add more input into say including non town owned land there was some specific parcels detailed so I think two of you would like to do that. I don't know what the, I, what, clearly Mr. Schultz would not. I'm just concerned. It looks like we're giving favoritism to Mr. Heffron, and that's not something we should be doing as I a board. I agree. I think it should stay yeah. in town. It looks like we're trying to give him a deal on his property. property. Yeah. The optics are horrible with that. We either do everybody on 28 or nobody. Okay. We can't just single out properties. Can I kind of comment for a second? The reason why this came up, why I brought it up in the first place, was when I saw the parks and by the intergenerational community center already being defined as being at Ipswich River Park, I knew that in discussion, not everybody feels that way. And so the point was, we have to have an open mind. I'm not trying to do anything on the half front property or anything else like that. If you know how much it costs to split up the fire department or to make one big facility, you can just plug and play what properties are available and you can just add in how much that is. That isn't very hard to do. So I'm not really trying to look at that. I'm really just trying to figure out is how much would it cost to repair the current fire facility or to make it as big as it needs to be to the central. Yeah. Or if we break up. You can't do it, Rich. Yeah, we already have yeah. the numbers. <laughs> well, we that would be good to have. Okay, but my point is, is that. That's why it's not listed as specifically on this plan. So we just. But we, well, that would let, be the let, information we need to know. Look, Mr. Walner. You, you really did have the mic, so please. Okay. I just, so even on the, the intergenerational community center, just by reading it here, it looked like it was already assumed it's going to be right there. That consultant would go with that. I'm saying that there's a discussion point there, and that may not be the best place to put it. And so it's, we have to have an open mind. I'm not saying where it should go. I'm just saying it may not be going there. Or it should, it, there's a discussion point that hasn't been decided yet. That's all. The message to the consultant was that this is something that's already in the back of our minds, a plan. Yep. Not necessarily there, although I think you're right to assume based on whatever that that's been the talk. Yep. The reason for doing that was so that when the consultant came in and measured all the little rooms in town hall and measured all the rooms here and there and saw what services were needed and what should be replicated and what could be this and what could be that, he didn't need to worry about those services which we had really talked about having at an intergenerational center. It, and it's pretty clear, if I could just add it, it says it identified a proposed site, but you know, he could just as easily say once you bulldoze this, you can build everything right, right here. Now on this site, you know, we don't we don't know what yeah. the consultant's gonna say, but yeah. but our issue is one thing here. If we could just wrap this up, it's do we want to ask the consultant to consider for municipal purposes privately owned parcels, one of which we know that the owner is interested in engaging the city with some sort of type of a development? And then adjacent to that is another parcel that's really not even on the market, but, you know, would, would require other action by the board, I'm assuming, to acquire. Uh, Mr. Governor, you had your hand up. I mean, I, 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 at the risk of complicating the conversation, <laughs> but trying to resolve it. Really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think what we could do is, is maybe keep in there the language that articulates that we have done some level of planning relative to the 5 Central Street location, because we have, and we felt it was important yes. to identify that, but perhaps stating that we would consider um, other available or underutilized properties um, in the commercial areas of town. So that keeps it broad. I, we, I think we'd have to provide some active feedback about what we actually mean with that. 
Um, but I, you know, I'm thinking of, for example, our conversation on 217 Main Street. It, we became interested in it only because it was available. Right. And um, there may be others that are out there that yeah. we don't really know of, but they may do a quick search of an MLS and find out, hey, that's available. Or what about that underutilized uh, salt barn on Main Street? You know, something like that. Um, so I think that's general enough that we could kind of put them on notice, say we would consider it, but we're not scripting it okay. too much. Yep. It's certainly going to come up in the conversation. Yeah, this, we've talked about this particular location um, or that particular location, but I don't think we need to limit the RFP to that. Would that sort of satisfy the concerns that yeah. folks have brought out here? I think so, yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean, yep. consensus I'm with that. No, I, I think it's a problem when you start dealing with private property. It's like, it looks like you're trying to do half on a deal. Yeah. That, and when we keep talking about that property, and we're going to have this study look at his property. Yeah. I mean, I can look think. The optics of that is horrible, Mike. I mean. I, yeah, I, I could probably think of four other properties that are in the area that yeah. would be equally um, you know, desirable for redevelopment. And you're a business owner, that a commercial property owner that owns the other property. You're saying, why are they dealing with him? Why aren't they talking to me? I want yeah. a shot at this. And, and so what, what I think, and so we, fortunately we have a roadmap. Um, we talked earlier about this um, appropriation of money for the wastewater plant, the package treatment plant at, in the area. That study actually w was very focused on particular parcels in that central area where 28 and 62 come together. We could simply limit it to that. And that would give you, I think, a dozen or so properties that are previously identified as a targeted area uh, without getting it too out of control in terms of how big a scope you're talking about. Um, I, I would be more than comfortable with saying that that would certainly be in the public interest and it would be consistent with a previous right. study we've done. So. I feel good about that. Yeah. Okay. I just have one more question while we're on to the topic, though. So wouldn't it be, though, in the, in the end result would be if we, if we were to identify something be a one study or the other suitable to municipal need that we could be, we would be acquiring. We'd, we would have to put out a request anyway for all parcel owners who might have a similar property and you know we would have to, that's how we would have to acquire it anyway with use of municipal funds. Uh, unless, unless you we, made a determination right. of uniqueness. Um, yes, which yeah. we've done before obviously with 217 Main Street but you right. need to do that publicly right. and it need to be obviously justified. But I think, you know. But there's a number of parcels in that area that might be suitable to yeah. consideration, in other words. The other thing so I just wish we would all consider is when we isolate, if we have a study that isolates a particular parcel as having a town need, you've just increased the price tag of that parcel sure. to that owner, whatever, exponentially. I don't think that's smart negotiation. I, yeah, I, I, don't yeah. I don't disagree with you, and, and I think. You know, again, if you if you look at the study, it was it's on the CPC's website. It, it focused on a I don't want to call it a zone, but it was an area um, that was you know there's multiple properties that are there. Some may be available, some are def definitely not available. Some we might want to be available. I think that focuses it enough for us to be able to to say we're not favoring any one property. We're really more like we would with zoning, looking at an area and saying this is an area we would want to consider. But this study is going to say this property would be good for X. That's what the study is going to say. And you just increase the price of that property by having that study say that. That's the re I, I just, I don't understand the logic, but I'm in the minority. I don't think the study can possibly determine what's going to be good at a piece of real estate that's not even going to be up for sale for another 10 years. Like Stop and Shop. Yeah. You can't do that. This consultant has to deal with what's available now. Otherwise, we're just wasting our money. Right. So he goes and makes recommendations for three different uses that would all fit together at, for example, Stop and Shop. And then Stop and Shop never comes to fruition, and you're back at go for a lot of the facilities. It's not a facilities master plan. When you do that, it has to be basically properties that are available or you can bet the ranch or we own now or we own now let's look at what we have now there's no land acquisition cost mm -hmm. so to, to be clear that's how we started with this yeah. I mean, you know I, and not because they wanted to foreclose any other option but because I, I thought that was the most um, feasible course of action for us to follow I'm trying to provide a, a, a solution that addresses the concerns brought up by the board members uh, you know the, the, you saw the way it's written. It was focused only on town only and originally. But I'm trying to capture what I think the board is providing for feedback. We don't need a vote, but I think the consensus of at least the, the consensus of the majority is to put that in as consideration. But we're not 
We're not saying we're going to buy it. We're not saying we're going to require it. We're not saying we're going to, but it would just be a potential consideration. Would you want to see the overlay of the area I'm talking about? Would that help in the conversation? Do you have? I it? can bring it up fairly quickly. I don't know if you want to go to the Would minutes. Would that be the area we changed the zoning on about a year or two ago? Uh, no, no, it's okay. a little more extensive. A little than more that. extensive. Yeah. Right. Um, if you want to maybe take up the minutes while I bring it up, it might take a couple minutes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but okay. just a suggestion. All right. So can we can we go to the minutes? Yes. We're back to uh, item number three. Three. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 20, 2019 executive session minutes as written. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to approve the June, no. June 10th, 2019, regular session. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to approve the June 10th executive session. Minutes as written. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Walner. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 20, 2019 regular session. Minutes as written. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Should I go to board member reports? Sure. <laughs> do, we, do we have any reports? I'm all set. Wonderful. Mr. Walner. Oh. Oh. Mr. Rich. Walner? No, I uh, obviously sat with Danielle last week to go over CPC type stuff, so I knew they were coming with a presentation. So Great. I spent some time doing that. Great. I'd like to talk about some senior housing. Uh, last week, I had the opportunity to tour the Carpenter Drive site with uh, Danielle McKnight and Mary Prenny, and joined us, joining us was Susan Connolly of the Mass Housing Partnership. Uh, Ms. Connolly, we walked through the woods, through the mosquitoes, and uh, looked at the topography, and Ms. Connolly's gonna get some GIS maps, and she's gonna get back to the town with some ideas that she think would best fit that particular piece of land for senior housing. So, it's in the initial Where stages. And behind Carpenter Drive off of Chestnut. Um, so it's in the really, really initial stages, but we did walk the property, and uh, Ms. Connelly's going to give us some ideas, and we'll go from there. Good. Yep. Anything else? I nope. do. Do we want to do it now? or we Sure. Yeah. Yes, go for it. Um, all right. I attended the scholarship award ceremony for the North Reading Republican Town Committee, of which I am proudly a member of the scholarship committee. Um, the award was given to Caitlin Ann Shevlin this year. Uh, uh, North Reading High School senior. The ceremony was held at the Town Common in front of the Veterans Memorial on Flag Day. It was attended by a nice crowd, including the um, Republican Town Committee Chair Jeff Yule, the Scholarship Committee Chair Irene Yule, State Representative Brad Jones, Senate Minority Leader Bruce Tarr, Director of Veterans Affairs, Susan Magner, School Committee Member Janine um, Embriano, and her proud parents. Um, it's our seventh year. She was awarded a $750 scholarship. Her essay um, is What the American Flag Means to Me, which is, um, it's a nonpartisan scholarship open to any graduating, North Reading graduating senior who will be going on to college in the fall. Uh, it's inspiring to read the essays that these um, seniors write. Um, it gives us hope for the future. <laughs> it always makes me smile to read them. Um, and I just want to share that. It's great. Nice. Thanks. Mr. Gilberto. You all set? I am. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the map up on the screen here 
um, is directly out of the 2015-2016 uh, economic development uh, report that was uh, um, commissioned by the Community Planning Commission and uh, drafted by the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. So this yellow line delineates the border of the area that was evaluated for um, potential economic development strategies. So when we talked earlier about the appropriation from October of 2016, um, it was targeted towards this particular area. Um, we were talking earlier about this property here at 66 Winter Street. This is the stop and shop property. But my point in putting it up is that it's a large area. Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, to use Mr. Walner's terms, this is the there, I think, that we were looking at. Um, but it goes as far south as um, the Postal Service uh, property that uh, the, uh, down here, that at least a portion that fronts Main Street, and as far north uh, as, so let me see where I'm at here, the southern end of Park Colony, is that right? No, I'm sorry, Greenbrier? It's, right it's, it's just south of Greenbrier. Yeah. So it's a pretty large area, and, and I, I think that, you know, that there are some concerns about the, the tax base, the commercial commercial base in that area, but there are also numerous properties, uh, some of which I think are being underutilized. So it, it may be a way to achieve the um, to address the concerns of the con of the uh, the majority, as expressed here, without limiting it to any one or two properties. Good idea to incorporate it into the scope. Yep. It's a slippery slope, in my opinion. I'll comment from the chair. It, 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 it kind of seems like it would be sending this consultant on a wild goose chase with that large of a segment. That, that could be just one project in and of itself. Study this entire corridor and tell us what would be good for municipal use. But Isn't that what the 50,000 no. was for? No, was for no. this? This whole area. It was, yes. Let me let me not speak to that. Let me let Mr. Kilbert <laughs> speak to that. Because I thought the fifty the fifty thousand was centered around kitties, Mr. Heffron's parcel, stop and shop parcel, um, a, a really specific vicinity of local businesses that might be benefit from a I, I think what we're confusing a little bit is the rezoning article that was proposed. Right. Which did not include this entire area. It included. We carved out stop and shop. It, it, it excluded. We carved that out. It, yeah. It excluded yeah. stop and shop and went the other way. Mm -hmm. Both sides of 28 north of no, Heavily yeah. Donuts. Right. Mrs. Up to Walgreens, no, but Mrs. It? Gonzalez was talking about the fifty thousand dollar appropriation for the study and what that was She's for correct. purposes of. That, she, she is correct. That was, it, it right. was originally appropriated. My belief is it was intended for this particular area. The whole thing. Yes. Yeah including the potential uh, construction of a oh. package treatment plant somewhere in this area to service this, th these privately owned parcels. That was the original intention in October of 2016. Okay. So right. why, why have we leered away from that and gone just to, is that what we agreed on tonight, just the half run? No. 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 They wanted to utilize some of the 50,000 to to consider what Mr. Heffron was proposing. That's which was I mean, instead of doing not instead of, but it included in what they're considering. That that's my understanding. After all that discussion, that's my understanding. That should we, it, as part of our review, include what Mr. Heffron proposes, which is maybe some sort of a sh you know shared ownership of sale or considering that. But 
but uh, I could be wrong. I thought I listened ardently to that spirit of discussion. I understood it differently. <laughs> I understood so. it differently. <laughs> I understood it that instead of doing all of this, they're going to focus only on the Heffron. No. The immediate area of the Heffron property. No. But the yes, yes to the immediate area. That's what I. Yeah, heard. they weren't focusing on this whole. That's yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which right. is what it was supposed to be already originally. Here. This is the this is you know ground zero was already here. Heffron just happens to be that part of it. But this is that's where this all that focus is supposed to be right there. Is what do you do here to make that a good economic development? And how do you build in a sewage? But treatment? it was originally supposed to be for that whole area. But how is putting town buildings economic development? That's what I keep coming back to. If we want to develop this economically, we should be putting businesses here, not town buildings. Uh, actually, what you build is you build roofs. You want to build people. You want to build people close to it, which we've already changed with zoning. I don't know what that means. Right? So if you look at the Linfield uh, Street Market Common, whatever it's called, there's tremendous amounts of buildings that have been built around it because that's also how you get people to go there. So you have senior housing over there, you have apartments over there. They all surround that. And if you go in that area any time of the day, it's busy. Yeah, because there's a commercial so base I, I, there. I need to. And residential. But, but it, there's the commercial also, came first. But there's also, it wouldn't be uncommon to put some sort of there, there. That's again a, a, a development term. A there, there is to also put in potentially a civic gathering spot, which could be town hall, may not be, could be a stage, who knows. Something there that doesn't generate any apparent economic benefit if you think of the Linfield Market Common. They have one in the middle of it. What do they advertise? They advertise their skating rink, which is no bigger than this room, which is practically useless, but they advertise it big time. And then they advertise yoga during the spring and summer because that draws people out. Does it draw in any immediate, is there anybody making any money off that? No, but it's a way to draw people in. So that's a strategic development part. That's not a... Right, it's, it's in the middle of 70 stores. Let's, all right. I you mean, know what, let's keep it. Mrs. Gonzalez has had her hand up. That ice rink is making money off of me because my kids <laughs> skate there, so they are making money off of it. But let me just, Mrs. Gonzalez and I had a different take on what was presented. Yeah. And, and yep. Mr. Walner, you're telling me something else, so I mustn't have listened very carefully because I didn't say that they, I didn't think they were going to use the 50000 just to zone in on Mr. Heffron's parcel. No, no, I didn't say that. I, I okay. never said that. I'm sorry. Uh, he's, I agree, said, he's agreeing with you. I said, I said that he is one slice. They're looking at this whole the, thing. Everything right? etched but, out in the yellow. No. No. That's no, what no, I'm, they, okay, so that's what I need in. to, we need to clarify yes, what went on tonight because yeah. this is what I understood. This was the original appropriation for the 50000 This entire yellow Corridor. lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was, I felt, asked for tonight was for that 50,000 to now just be zoned in on that area and not on the entire area. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. That's what I heard. Limit the scope. Yes. But I you just said, Mr. O'Leary, earlier, why would we cancel out anything? Why would we not consider everything? Why would we limit ourselves? So you've just limited us. I mean, why are we not still appropriating that 50,000 for that entire area? I mean, there's a mobile home park. Why aren't we looking at their property? Why are we just looking at Heffron's? I, these under, are the questions that- That's under right control, by the way. It, I, I mean, it's just the point is, I don't know why we've zoned away from that when that's what it was for. I, you'd have to ask the planning commission. I'm sorry. I just I can't I can't explain there. You know they're thinking other than this opportunity has presented itself. It provides an the owner of the property has approached the town and offered to partner in some way to Absolutely. collaborate. Yeah. And, and as a result, it allows you to focus in on a smaller area to help start something. As opposed to this was again a, a great idea and something that we invested in and didn't get it off the ground yet, so therefore we're being asked by the planning commission to hone in a little bit more on a smaller area with an opportunity to get things moving and see if it, see if the opportunity is worth taking advantage of. But I don't, I don't, I don't. So we got this 
handout. I know we just got it for the meeting, but it's basically it's basically saying property owner outreach to determine potential partners in redevelopment and what businesses will benefit slash support that. So okay. I don't I don't think it was just limited to that. Can we get back oh. to, to what we oh. were talking about though, just in relation to the uh, review of the facilities master plan scope. I mean, again, to me, I think everything's related here. Everything's yes, interrelated. Of course, of everything's course, interrelated. Yes. And then Ms. we go back to, Mrs. you know, when the CPC was here. But, Mrs. Doherty you know, wants to give us edification too. And if, so. we're not going to inter <laughs> if we're not going to tie them together, you know, then yeah. we're spending money here and we're spending yeah. money there, yeah. And, yeah. and they're not talking to each other. Mm -hmm. right. okay. Mrs. So Doherty, me, did you have some input for us? I, I just wanted to ask for clarification. <laughs> the CPC and narrowing the scope to the small area. Permission was permission granted to devote the fifty thousand, all the fifty thousand dollars to the small area, or just you know, that's, that's my you question. know, maybe it will take five thousand dollars to look at the small that's a good area. Question. You know what I mean? Like, do they just get a blank check to right not look at the rest of it? Right. Can, can I answer that? Can I? Yeah, I I so mean, I, town meeting appropriated fifty thousand dollars to that whole yellow area that. Right. Michael had up on there. Right. Now they're going to take that fifty thousand dollars and just do the one block. That's right. That's, that's not right. That's but not what town no, meeting voted. But no, I'm just saying it right could after. be interpreted that way, or it could be. Well, we need to well, clarify. Well, maybe it'll only cost five thousand dollars to just at this period yes. of time look yes. at this little area, and then we still have forty-five thousand for the rest of the yellow area. I don't think that was discussed. What? One more. One more. What they actually said. If you, you <laughs> if you, I'm sorry. What's your name? My name's Okay. And what they actually said at the end was that they wanted to get together an ad hoc committee with Thank as you. many volunteers who had both relevant experience and expertise as possible and then figure out how much they would need to spend to bring in the appropriate consultants to round out what they could get with free appropriate labor. So they weren't actually taught, they weren't talking about how much of the 50,000 they would have to spend because at this point they didn't know. What they said was their first step would be to get together a committee of volunteers and then figure out what consultant or consultants they would need on top. But what they were looking at was the general area of that would include the heffron, but what they were looking at was the area that was generally delineated by the survey that had been done previously that had looked at the um, general area of parcels that delineated where 62 and 28 come together and they were going to look at it from the point of view of all of the stakeholders who I assume would be both parcel owners and if there were in general a private public partnership to try to figure out what could be done and then to come back to you with that so that you could consider it. And that was the last thing they said. Right. They Sometimes weren't just zoning in on, yeah, that's right. They were not just zoning Helps. in on the heifer parcel. Because the whole premise of why the appropriation was there was for the whole. No, they were zoning on that particular corner, not the whole yellow corner. piece. Yeah, they were zoning they for that corner. Yes. Yeah. The they were talking about the yeah. down to the post yeah. office yeah. Yeah. So No. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But they weren't talking about that two and a half acre right. parcel right. only. Right. Right. That's right. They were yeah, that, that, that corner. But town meeting voted for that study to be for everything that's in yellow on the screen right now. Well, right. that's not what that money's being used for by. But students. they also that's weren't talking at at the moment about expending any of the 50000 So you do need to go back and uh, talk about yeah, what they're going to do that. with sure. their committee. Can we but all they talked about that? doing was getting the will of your committee to move forward to yeah. get a committee to do that. So if you get back to them, that was what they were saying when they left, qualitatively. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the input. Well done. Yes. Well said. Sometimes if you just have to sit and listen for three hours, you can <laughs> regurgitate something. That's kind of funny. And thank you for coming tonight, too, Elizabeth. You were the one who told me. I know. Me I'm glad you came. Yeah. Clinic, so thank you for coming. It's great to see out. Citizen Shaw. Yeah. So, Mr. Gilbergo, 
We so have the, the, the scope under consideration. We do not have a consensus that it should incorporate non-town owned parcels. Do we or do we not? Mr. O'Leary, what is your yes. thought? Mr. Walner. Are we talking about the facilities plan? Where are we talking yes. about? We're the back to what was so We're back to the scope of the facilities plan. Can you please repeat yourself, Leonard, please? I was, I was still s stuck on the, the uh, previous. <laughs> One more time, sorry. Okay, and the sorry. hour is late. Yes. We're all confusing ourselves mm. now. Mm -hmm. And thank thankfully we have citizen participants. <laughs> <laughs> Straighten us Making up. Making sure yeah. we're. With proper keeping. caffeine. <laughs> yeah. So we are back to the finance chair, what the finance yep. chair presented, which is way down on the agenda is number 14. Yep. The facilities master plan scope. There were parcels identified. They're all town-owned parcels. We talked about the considerations that, that that master plan would be considering. Mrs. Hurlbut told us to read the Wilmington master plan study for our own edification of what she thinks it should consider. Somewhere along the line, Mr. O'Leary would like us to add in the Non-town owned. Non-town no. owned, with a specific focus on this particular area, because we have a, yes. we have yeah. at least one parcel owner who is interested in considering a joint venture or some type of a arrangement with the town, which we already gave the imprimatur to the CBC <laughs> to go study, which we're all, we were all quite confused about, except for you two, so, which said, you both said yes. So now, what, what we're doing is, we're either gonna keep it as it is, or we're gonna add into the scope non-owned parcels, presumably being these, is that, do I have it correct? I think what the town administrator suggested, right. okay. I think what the town administrator suggested works. So that's what do I'm Do you remember of. what you suggested to us 30 I, I, minutes ago? I do, and the truth is I, I, I've heard that there are different opinions about the development of, of town-owned uses on this zone, and I, I really wanted this conversation to occur because if the facilities master plan committee gets too far down the road with certain assumptions and they're not endorsed by the select board it's not good for the project it's not good overall so we or I started the conversation with the facilities master plan committee limiting it to currently town don't town owned properties um, the feedback from the board was well could we look at some non-town owned properties uh, in light of this proposal for 66 Winter Street. And then there was some concern I heard about just 66 Winter Street being looked at or just 66 Winter Street and an adjacent property being looked at. And my suggestion was, well, rather than limit it to those two properties, is there a, a desire to look at this zone as the previously recognized, to use Mr. Walner's term, there um, by the study efforts? And so we would basically be saying in the RFQ, request for qualifications, is in addition to the town owned property, over two acres or over, um, without a restriction on it, or conservation or other restriction, look at properties within this zone. That's kind of, I think, what my suggestion was in response to the concern that I heard. It's not my recommendation one way or the other. It's simply my no. a way to try to right. conclude the my conversation. Issue with, my issue with, with Hurling that upon this now is that wasn't the principal effort for that fifty thousand dollars. The oh, principal effort wasn't even things. conducted two different with things. the with the appropriation. Are you talking about different different, different things. Talking no, about two different no things. we're not. You're talking about Abby's facility master plan. Exactly, and That's now we're p imposing this upon that. That wasn't even studied. Like what was the so budget we had for we, the master plan? The facilities master plan was two hundred. The oh, facilities sorry. master plan was two hundred thousand. The wastewater or redevelopment proposal that was discussed earlier was fifty thousand. Right. But there's no way we get that done for two hundred thousand if we include all these properties. I, uh, 
Yeah. Gotcha. I think they should be two separate entities. I think. <laughs> yes, you can, like, everyone's think, chiming in, so please feel free. I, I think really the question we're faced with is, is there a desire to consider a municipal use in this area or, or not? I mean, really that's what we're struggling with yes. right now. Yeah. And well, yes. I think the Planning Commission yes. has come here to say that we think it's, that there's uh, an in opportunity. In the entire area, not focused. Right. Yes, somewhere putting, within it. Why are we putting town buildings on 28? All right. So, so this is what I'm, this please, is. Please, 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 please. We're confusing one another by talking over one another, and Jane can't record this. But th that is the question. Do we, uh, yes. is there an appetite to consider this property or not? Any of these properties? Yes. Right. No. I'm sorry. In my opinion, Excuse there's me. a strategic, yes. there's a strategic, there could be a strategic reason why you would want to do that. I concur. And Mr. Schultz says no. I couldn't disagree more. I, that's our commercial <laughs> zone. That's commercial business. Putting a town hall on a building that you could have something really nice built with sewage and get real tax dollars back, to me, is beyond silly. Mrs. Mrs. Gonzalez. So I, I wasn't, there's just so much more to this. Right. There's, there's not just town hall. There's, there's other things involved. Um, I, I think it's worth looking at. But I don't think it should be tied into Abby's. I think it's two different entities. There's fifty thousand dollars appropriated for for that to get that started. No. Yes. How, it, it, yes, but it, however, that's not what we just heard. Is that that they're that, 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 they're going to study it and they're going to put together. They're going to study for, for for wastewater. <sighs> it's not what what's been proposed by the CPC is not related to a facilities master plan necessarily, you know, other than Mr. Everett was looking to maybe partner with us to do something, but we don't know what that something is. You know, it's, it's a totally separate look. It has nothing to do with the current scope that's proposed by the facilities, whatever we're calling ourselves these days, mm -hmm. you know, the master plan, facilities master plan, municipal master plan. To me, we need to Look at it. It may be, if we're looking to create, and again, the, the, the MAPC study and all the other studies we've had recently has said, you know, said that you know, we're looking at creating a new downtown area. And in order to do that, you need municipal assistance. You need municipal input. You need municipal presence, I believe, to do that in order to stimulate people to come. You know, it's, it's the richest point. So why would we not? allow and include in the scope for the facilities master plan this area. It's huge. I mean this is the this is what we're looking for for a future here, potentially. And unless we look at it in total and in conjunction with whatever the CPC is looking to do with, we're not gonna have the full picture. You've got two hundred thousand dollars in one study and fifty thousand dollars on another study, you've got a quarter of a million dollars here, and we're not joining the two forces together to take a look at the whole picture. I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, if you don't want to, if you don't want to put municipal buildings on Route 28, fine. That's a philosophical uh, difference of opinion we may have as to what we need in order to jumpstart mm -hmm. economic development. We can we can discuss that at another day. But to not look at it, I think, is short-sighted. Why is the CPC looking at the whole thing? Short-sighted. Okay, I think it's short-sighted if we don't include it in the scope. And I think what the town administrators proposed as far as including this area is, hey, take a look at it while you're looking at things. Why not? I think that's a separate project altogether. That's why not. And you're not going to get a Lin Linfield Marketplace in there. That's no, not a town-owned. It's a privately-owned, and that's and why it does so well. It's that's not what I'm looking for. Can we either. move to a vote on this? We've discussed this for an hour. Okay. All yeah. right. So I don't think we're going to reach a... Let's just vote on it. <laughs> Oh, we already have. We've gone back and forth on it. So, uh, do we need a vote, Michael? Did you, do we don't have a vote in the package? We would well, just. Abby already said she's going to include it. We all have. <laughs> she a, walked out. <laughs> 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 this is her. This is her. Was said as chair. She's so, only going to include it. So, you know, and walked out of the room. But no, you know, I, I think she left an hour I, ago. I think there needs to be some sort of a consensus of the majority of this board as to whether or not you want to take a look at this area. 
as far as what are we going to be doing for the next two generations for this community. Mm. It's not a huge stretch in my mind. I, no, I, don't, I, it's not a huge I, I don't see the stretch either, other than, you know, we're opposed to the idea. That's okay. You're going to be opposed to the idea, but to not look at it. Is it feasible, money wise, for that to be included? That's a good question. So, 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 so the review. I can't imagine. No. That looks like its own <laughs> study. Right. Yeah. So just, just, just we, wouldn't, we would not be asking the consultant to, you know, get into. Could this building serve the purpose? Right. Or could that building serve the purpose? The, the, the look that they would conduct would be, is the parcel big enough for one of these faci municipal facility needs? Is it dry enough for one of these needs? It would be something like that. I mean, it would be cursory, I, I think, if you were to include it. Okay. But it, I think the issue really is fundamentally, is there an appetite on the board to see economic develop uh, development that's non-private or you know, public development on that? In that stretch. Okay. Last yes. comment, yeah. Mr. Schultz. Can we put this off to the next meeting? Because the Economic Development Committee should be here commenting on this, and they, they weren't invited tonight to this, this discussion. They really should be a part of this discussion. They're the Economic Development Committee of our town. I mean, they should be here and chiming in. Because I'm not hearing economic development. I'm hearing built municipal buildings. And, and I, I, I'm, it's certainly the purview of the board to decide. But I do have a bit of a concern based on, um, you know, the fact that we kind of have parallel projects that maybe we could sew together a little bit better yeah. based on this discussion, which the Planning Commission was not privy to, but they're not here. They can right. certainly watch. Um, what happens, we, we'll lose time, um, both on the end of 66 Winter Street, but also on the end of the facilities master plan. But a, as I think you can tell from the calendar, we're almost two years behind anyway yeah. on that project. One month's not going to hurt us. So that might be advisable. It gives the EDC an opportunity to weigh in as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last comment, no, Mr. No, 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 it's fine. I think the direction should come from this board. To what we're looking for, the Economic Development Committee, or anybody else, or any other subcommittee, to take a look at. The direction's got to come from here. I'm not looking to be dictated to by other people. I'm looking for input. I'm looking for, you know, ideas, I'm receptive to anything and everybody. But we have to make the decision. We should be guiding the people that we appointed as to what the direction we want to see them take and investigate and look at. So I don't see kicking it down the road for another month is going to do it. If you want to take a look at this with the potential of some municipal investment in here, or you don't. Don't you want to hear what the EDC has to say? You haven't heard from them. Can you just said you want their input. And, now, and please, you either do or you no, don't. I mean, Mr. Schultz, please. Please. So I don't I don't really see the to to if it's just a cursory and they're not gonna use it. I'm I'm concerned though that what CPC presented isn't more of what I thought they were saying and I mis misunderstood that. So they're really zoning in on one and it feels like you're putting like Mr. Schultz said you're putting the car before the horse, not even knowing what they're presenting with respect to even those two parcels that they mentioned. Because they ha have yet to do their study. But you also heard the finance chair. They're, they're going to, they're working in tandem anyway. So I don't see an issue with it, it's provided that it's not utilizing the majority of funds That's how I feel. to study. If they want to look at it as long as it's yeah. feasible, I don't want it to take away from what it was set up for. Mm. Which is town owned parcels. That's really what's, what the study is. So we need you to. Direct that, you know, if it's you're not going to be knocking on people's doors saying, Let me take an inspection of your building because I want to see if it's a good t no. municipal building, you know. No, that, that would not be the scope, but but I, I will tell you, I mean, when I hear that we have two different studies going on for one area, that it you know, perhaps this conversation with the planning commission may be helpful. And I'm not looking to delay things, yes. I'm not looking to abdicate yeah. the board's you know, yeah. authority, but I, I do think you know, that along with the opinion of the EDC. These will all be people that will weigh in on whatever the outcome is of both of these studies. So it may be worthwhile to get that feedback. I mean, I do get concerned when I hear, you know, that we're talking that's about. That's what that ad hoc, that's what, that's why that formation of that task group, the ad hoc, where you pull people from all these different committees together, mm -hmm. should happen sooner than later. And that will avoid a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. of this uh, confusion. And yeah. we need to coordinate. Because mm -hmm. if we don't do that, people are going to be in silos 
and we're going to end up fighting, and it's going to turn ugly. And we don't want it to turn ugly. There's no reason for it to turn ugly. Right. right. It should be very cooperative. Right. We just need it, but it's going to be like, look how much time it's taken us now to discuss this. If you had a task group that all worked together, you could um, you could probably get through this more efficiently. But as Steve says, it's our decision. No matter what task group we yeah. have, and we can disagree. We, you know, yeah, that's all right. Of so, well, the CPC is a separate, independently elected body, and they're mm -hmm. moving forward with this ad hoc committee. It should be in tandem with everything what else. we're doing here yeah. with everything else. Yeah. Why wouldn't we include it and spend our money wisely? Why are we both analyzing the same parcel of land? Um, no, we're looking at it for two different reasons. Let's see, yeah, we are. Because let's go back. Because ED. Um, Last Sorry, comment. last comment. Last comment. The fifty thousand dollars <laughs> is largely devoted towards. I wasn't community. squinting at you. I'm sorry. It was the last. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> the, the fifty thousand dollars was originally devoted to create a package treatments area, right? But if you think about it, even at the high school, there is a package treatment plant right there, but the fire department and police have never hooked up. Why is that? Because even for them to get across the road is a huge amount of money. So really, the only area they can really focus on. To do the set, to do this, the treatment is really a very confined area. The, if you start talking down here, you start talking way up there. I'm talking only what the CPC had yeah. to say. You're talking. You might as well run the pipe from. Andrew. Yeah, the it's treatment. Be this very packaging so plant's not going to serve the plan. whole. Yeah, that's why they said they're looking at this area. The package treatment plant is here. The pipe runs over the DPW because that's one of the areas we can get rid of the waste. That's one of the areas where it goes. And you'd be talking about this very concentrated area because the reality is when you start crossing roads and stuff, you're talking huge amounts of money. And so what they're saying is, since we're doing that, let's look at the, let's let this be the, in your barbecue, the bar, the, the coal that's burning, that's, you know, this is the one that gets it started. Of course it's gonna eventually evolve everything else. And that's where the, that's where the facilities master comes in here. but. Practically, it's about the sewage, and the sewage has a very limited geographical area without so, spending so, tons and tons and tons of money. So without doing the study that the money was appropriated for, how did they zone in on that? Because Mr. Heffron approached them. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. No, because all the studies that have been done, and this is where I get my direction from, is if you look at the, again, I'm coming back to what I said like three hours ago. If you look at the <laughs> survey we did with the town, with the master plan, we sent out to everybody, we had 600 responses, and we've had a lot of studies leading up to those 600 responses that affirm that people's main interest in developing a downtown is in that area. It's been the natural, it's been the natural area for the last five, six, seven years I've been watching this, and it was even more defined in the survey. To me, that's the town saying, we want you to at least pay attention to this and try to do something because we really believe in it. And adults want a community center. I don't know how many people I know I've tried to convince to come to town, and they go, but you don't have a downtown. You know, where do, where do you gather other than the athletic fields? Where do you gather? I mean, it's really important. Stone has it, Reading has it, Andover has it. Everybody has a downtown, we don't. And it makes sense that we create it. And the town seems to support it, and that's where I take my direction from. Cool. That's, that's, that yeah. was the purpose of the $50,000 appropriation to begin with, to study bringing <laughs> For commercial development, right. not for municipal development. And 600 people of 11,000 voters is not the town supports it. That's no, no, I agree, people. but it's, yeah. it's more it's information. More people than what voted in it's the more information yeah, exactly. than we have right now. So yeah, yeah. But when they start seeing overrides for all these projects, all they're right. not going to be supportive. Let's let's wrap this up because yeah. I think we're in a we're in a we're def definitely in a state of disagreement. We have that study that, like I said, we just gave the imprimatur and. <laughs> He's going to look into this anyway. So um, I think the direction would be for scope is if provided that it's not absorbing, right. fiscally absorbing, really what the intent of that $200,000 was, right. was to study municipal need, mm -hmm. municipal parcels. What do we need? What what do we need to grow? Where would the, it be best well, Shouldn't the EDC located? present to us before we make a decision on this? This is the biggest commercial area of the town. We're not... The Economic Development Committee is not going to have a stake at the table. I know, but Mr. Gilberto is saying that if, if it does get incorporated, it's a cursory look. That's it's yeah. at best. I think you've so. just blown the budget on that 200000 But This is, I don't know. Well, let's we'll see. We're going to put RFPs out, so they're gonna, they'll tell us what they're willing to do. Right, 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 right. right.
and if it's fiscally not yes. feasible, then it's not going to happen. Correct. But the study's still going to move forward in Correct. terms of municipal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Municipal resources, municipal need, municipal development of our own parcels. Mm -hmm. or okay. Okay. Does that give you some direction? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, we'll, and we'll, honestly, we'll this was the, the very, this, we'll know what was included. This was, none of us saw this. I can't take This is the first I've seen it. Either. Right. I have so to go from memory. This is what we notes. do here. Yeah. If we can't just rubber stamp yeah. everything like yeah. we do the minutes. Sometimes we don't rubber no, stamp. No, I know. Them, I but, you know. <laughs> kind of wish this was, had we'll been different, but anyways. But that's what we do here. Yeah. We have five different opinions yep. on these things, so. Yep. And it doesn't mean we're not all for the development of the town or for the town needs or for commercial development. That's what we do. We have a healthy debate about it. Yeah, and I think it gets I straightened think, out by and, the president. And as we share information, we learn along the way, right? Things Absolutely. we've all acquired. So it's Absolutely. like, you know, as yes. we pay attention, we so all learn thank something. Thank you for so. that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So moving on. I'm good. We, we somewhat expanded the scope. Only incrementally. Um, <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to hear back from all of these committees anyway. And ultimately, the responsibility to acquire is ours. It has to be through us. Or yep. take parcels or acquire is ours. Um, after the town says it's OK. Yeah, of course. What are, oh, we haven't even done the show right. vote to show cause. OK, so I think we're on to number 11. No, no, yes, we are. Num uh, excuse me, number 13. Page 70 is the vote to schedule show cause hearing. Actually, it's smokes and snacks. I don't know if you, the boards had the opportunity to review um, the incident. It was sale to, sale to an underage, an underage um, party. Um, and so in order to have the license holder in, we would have a show cause hearing related to that potential violation. Correct. So Correct. we received we received a report from the police department mm -hmm. relative to a traffic stop. They have reason to believe that uh, Lucky Mart sold to an underage individual. Uh, the uh, normal process is that we schedule a show cause hearing. The party is notified of the hearing. They're able to uh, come in and uh, speak to the uh, allegations. Police department will be here as well. They will present the allegations to the board, and the board can make a determination relative to any uh, discipline, if appropriate. I celebrate all of you. Stole Stugulus Drive. I celebrate all of you for so long, and you're still at it. And I value the, the, both the agreement and disagreement, but most of all, the discussion, the passion that you all bring, and the fact that you all truly do care about our community. Thank, Thank you. Thank and you. we Thank celebrate you yes. people coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We I'm gonna keep bugging you every meeting, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank All you. right. Thanks, you. Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> thank you. Good night. All right. So we need a. Do I have a motion? Do there we have any discussion on that? We I think it's certainly worth the show cause. Here. Oh yeah. 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 I read the allegations that are troubling and they should be heard. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I move to schedule show cause hearing for smoke and snacks, uh, 28 Lucky Mart for Monday, July 15th, 2019, at 8:45 p.m. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Walner, to, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, next order of business is to approve Aye. legal Aye. bills. Yep. So there is a revised motion. It just reflects two uh, bills that I received from the American Arbitration Association after we published the packet. Um, so uh, I'm asking them to be included. They total $425, I believe. Okay. Do I go through each of them? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I move to approve legal bills for March 2019 in the amount of 17,097.88 as follows. Copelman and Page, 8,941.88. Copelman, Copelman and Page, 4,731. Arbitrator, Sarah Kerr Garrity. 3,000, American Arbitrator Association, 425, American Arbitration Association, 275, American Arbitration Association, 150, for a total of 17,522 and 88 cents. Second. I have a motion, second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. 
town administrator's report, which is on page 96 of the share file, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. <clears throat> uh, I first will note that, uh, thank you. I first would note that uh, we've been notified that the uh, Mosquito Project does intend to conduct some spraying on uh, June 20th, this coming Thursday, weather permitting. There is information on the town website, and we just encourage residents to keep an eye on that. Um, the protocols are, uh, are included on the, uh, uh, on the web page. Uh, I've been advised by the library director that they are looking to make some, they, they are making changes in the library's fine structure in accordance with the best practice that's been recommended at the national level, and I included information there. Uh, the bottom line is it'd be moving away from uh, fines for um, for late returns um, because it's been uh, a strategy that has proved successful in other areas. Uh, it does not eliminate the obligation for uh, an individual who loses or has stolen from them uh, library materials. They would still be obligated to repay uh, for the value, uh, but if it's returned late, um, they would not be subject to fines. And uh, there's information in the packet that I provided relative to that. I also had some correspondence I had with Ms. Stoltz uh, relative to 20 Elm Street um, that I put in the packet as well, um, going back to the uh, middle part of May, I believe, uh, more for the board's information. Um, and then uh, finally, as the board knows, we held a safety training here in Town Hall on June 12th. I wish to thank the police department, human resources, and our employees for their thoughtful preparation for and participation in uh, valuable real-life scenarios. Uh, we all learned a lot and I expect to continue our efforts to ensure workplace safety through the reestablishment of a safety committee. Uh, I anticipate similar training will be offered at the library and the senior center this summer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Any questions for Mr. Lugardo? <coughs> all the new business. Mr. O'Leary? All set. Mr. Walner? Um, I, I know it's late at night, but I'm just wondering, you know, about getting the word about, about what the board has to say. Um, Andy has always taken on the role of, like, posting on the um, uh, Facebook, you know, like our agenda and things like that. I'm just wondering if at some point we could try to figure a way for us to do that kind of as a board as opposed to... We have talked about getting a town Facebook site. We're mm -hmm. just waiting on a, a, um, a email address. A, a email address. We <laughs> have to have an email address to sign okay. up yeah. from IT, and then we'll have one up, and then... Okay. These guys will determine what goes on. It'd be nice if the yeah. board was being presented collectively, right, um, as much as yep. possible. Not yep. that it means anybody couldn't have their own opinion, but, you know, I think it'd be nice for us to put a face out that is the board and mm -hmm. the communication thing, and so when we can do that, that'd be great. How we do that is a secondary issue, but, you know, having the opportunity would be a great, great thing for us to have. So the, the kind of initial discussion we've had is... Uh, uh, much in the way the police department has a Facebook page and Parks and Recreation has a Facebook page, the concept would be a town hall mm -hmm. Facebook page, which would be sort of all-encompassing and kind of a catch-all to general municipal business, as well as sharing anything from different departments. So Great. that's kind of the working yeah. discussion that we've, that's been ongoing for more than a year now, I guess. Great. Love to hear it. Thank you. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Mr. Schultz. Nope. Mrs. Gonzalez. Nope. I just have a quick question. I know you saw this letter to the parks director on the softball field mm -hmm. for the girls yes. from one of the coaches whose daughter plays. And I know that the little school softball field behind the school, is that maintained by the school department? Um, th there's shared maintenance, um, and I, I can tell you that there is a meeting scheduled to take place tomorrow uh, with the, uh, st uh, the stakeholders, including the softball, um, to try to discuss ways that we can improve the condition of the field. Um, we, the Parks Department does participate in the maintenance of the property, um, but there are limitations on their access to it, particularly during the school year. Um, so I think there needs to be a discussion about how we can try to uh, work together to provide um, uh, to, or, or make improvements where possible. But we have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow, and I'm happy to uh, report back to the board at the, June fi the, ju the July 15th meeting the outcome of that discussion. Okay. That's good. Yeah, because they, the kids at it's, the it's school use it every day, mm -hmm. although they've done on Wednesday. But but the other field that they're practicing at is behind here? Yeah, and that's horrible. And, yep. and, and who takes care of this? I believe that's exclusively Parks and Recreation. Okay. So are they going to talk about both of them? Or My understanding was it was limited to the little school fields, but it, I'm sure they'll bring up this field if that is an issue in the meeting tomorrow. Yeah, because that's what that's they, really he bad. mentioned this one as well. I think that both the boys and the girls practice on this one too. But okay. if there's a, a, 
a limiting of where they're going to be able to play the games. That field should be as well maintained as the fields that every everyone else plays on. Mm -hmm. I agree. So. My daughter sprained her ankle one year back there. Really? Yeah, playing softball. Yeah, it's always been pretty bad. Okay, we'll bring that up then. Or if it, they if it should isn't. have shared use of some make a, make a re schedule where they have shared use of the better maintained fields if that's you know if they're not going to who maintains little league is the little league field maintained by little league uh it, it's a combination yeah, parks do and recreation too. does you know maintenance but there's also league maintenance that's done as well so but just keep us posted on what I will. results from that that would be great that's all i have thank you thank you for the spirited debate motion to adjourn Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Third. All those in favor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> I got here late, so I'm going to stay late. <laughs> I have to make up for some time. I got to make up for some time. Four eyes and one name. Yeah.